episode 35 of The Beardcaster. My name is Scott Sakura, and I am The Beardcaster. <laughs> Welcome to a podcast all about beards and mustaches and the great people who live in the community. Hear the stories and adventures from the people and learn the tricks of the trade on how to grow and maintain your facial hair. There are many interesting situations that follow those of us with facial hair from lifestyle to competitions, tips and tricks we each have, everyday questions to daily life in the world around us. So join me as I share the stories about these people and hear how they are using their facial hair to be awesome and to do great and fun things. Once again, my name is Scott Sakura, and you found the podcast, The Beardcaster. I'd like to welcome you today. Let's see, where are we going to start this off at first? You might notice that there is not an episode 34. We just jumped right to 35. Well, there technically is two and a half versions of episode 34. There is a 34.1, 34.2, which that one never made it, and a 34.3, but I'll, I'll explain those to you uh, shortly. So just, but uh, if, you have, if you have any questions about what the show is, if you want to know a little bit more about who I am, you can go to thebeardcaster.com. Uh, if you're interested in subscribing, which you've already found me, so you've somehow got into a podcast so you can subscribe to me on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, Google Play Music, uh, iHeartRadio. I'm, I'm all over the place. So if whatever type of uh, podcatcher you listen to, just search The Beardcaster and you should be able to find me there. Uh, you can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. So subscribe on all those or like or whatever you do on any of those. I don't really care, but please follow along because there's lots of exciting and interesting things going on so but back to what the episode is all about today um what the episode is about is pretty much 80s 90s a little bit of 70s uh sitcom tv that we grew up with now how this all happened was it's a long story and it goes back a few weeks and and it really has nothing to do with beards and mustaches. I, I will tell you that much. We did talk about uh, Abraham Lincoln, though, and his beard and Mr. Belvedere and his mustache. So that's about all you're going to get out of this one. So this was more of a healing episode for uh, my friend Josh and I, Bald Face Josh. And we've actually been getting together quite a bit over the past uh, month or so. And we've recorded a ton of shit. And the thing is, is it's been all about specifically a tragedy that happened in our hometown uh, now about a month ago. And we lost uh, two young men in a tragic car accident, uh, one of them being very close to uh, myself, my niece's boyfriend, and the other was a very good friend of both my niece and nephew. So our family lost a couple really great great young men and Josh being a uh, teacher at the school had both of these boys through their whole high school years and he was also uh, he was very close with both of them and so the first episode episode 34 we recorded one night and we pretty much talked about how we were reacting to it. It was pretty fresh. We were both kind of uh, upset and we drank a little bit and we just, it just kind of, it was an all over the place kind of thing. I mean, it was, it was a good conversation and, uh, but we kind of mixed some other dumb shit in there and it just kind of didn't, it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but I, I did the whole episode beginning, middle, end and I have it. And then I decided, I'm like, well, let's do it again. And we'll do it this way. So we started recording it. It was beautiful. It was turning out exactly how I wanted it. And the batteries on my recorder died. So I lost that episode completely. No way I could save it. So by this point, we're really pissed. Because we had a bunch of good stuff. 
and I wasn't sure if I was going to release the one, and the other one would have been the one I would have released, but it got lost. So we decided that we would record a third one, and we would go a different way. So we made up all these notes, charts, and all this interesting stuff, and uh, we got together one night and we started recording and so I figured well let's just start recording we'll just start talking about stuff let you know get kind of like warmed up and everything so I think we started recording at like 9 or 9 30 and so we just started kind of bullshitting about this and that and then what you are about to hear right now is what we talked about and we just ended up talking for close to two hours about growing up with television and so we talk about all these different tv shows from when we were younger and we talked about uh different crushes that we had on different women that were on these tv shows and we you know we just kind of jumped all over the place talked a little bit about movies and so on and so forth and it just kind of evolved the conversation just started talking about like just different things but it, it, it's all for the most part about sitcoms and stuff and As we finished it, it was like, wow, we really needed that. That kind of like, it got our mind off of all the things that we've both have been going through over the past, you know, two, three, four months in our lives. And I mean, it's been up and down, up and down, up and down. And it's just been, you know, a lot of deaths over the past year and we're only halfway through and, you know, dealing with that amongst other personal issues and just I've been having I've been having a difficult time we'll just put it that way and it's definitely affected uh stuff with the podcast so it was one of those you know I haven't been in the mood to do it haven't been in the mood to do it just too too many other things on my mind I can't I could not focus on it and so Josh forced me forced me to get you know and I and I thank him very much for that. So, but uh, so then later that night we he just started talking about everything that you know him being a teacher and in the boys and and his experiences with each boy and what he thought about them and he said a lot of really beautiful things and was extremely I, I don't know he was just honest it, it was heartfelt. And so by the time we ended up finishing, it was like four in the morning. And so I had all this stuff, you know, all these different things. And, and so I ended up cutting that and recorded a whole nother episode. And as I listened back to it, I was just like, you know, I, this is episode 34.3, you know, and I'm not sure if I really want to release it either. I just, cause I don't know how people would take it. I don't know if people would be offended. I don't know if people would like it. And so I just kind of felt better off, you know, it, it, it's there. And I guess if anyone is really super interested in hearing it, they can email me Scott at the And I I'll consider sending you a copy of it. So, but Without further ado, let's just get right into this because this is going to be a really long episode. And this is this episode's for us. It's for us to just vent. And and there's going to be a lot more of these episodes coming of just nonsense bullshit because we're still trying to get through a lot of things in our life. And, and us getting together and just kind of talking about whatever has been wonderful therapy for both of us. So... If you don't mind, I'm going to be doing, I'll be doing some beard related shows. I got some stuff already lined up. I got some great people we're going to be talking to in the next few weeks, but I'm going to try to be popping a little bit more, more shows out. I'll be, you know, maybe I'll do one every week. Maybe it'll be every two weeks, but I'll try to get as consistent as I can. But like I said, there's going to be some weird episodes that have nothing to do with facial hair. It'll just be Josh and I venting about whatever, you know, just to kind of get blow some steam off so i hope you guys enjoy this there's some funny stuff in there uh hopefully you guys make it through the whole thing it's about an hour and 45 minutes so with everything this will probably be about a two hour episode so bang 
but uh, I hope you enjoy and action. We were talking about like the old TV shows we used to watch when we were younger, and then I could remember like what nights they were on and like. But they switch nights sometimes. Like one of the ones I want to go back and watch, and I actually watched a very very little bit of it not that long ago. Voltron, it's horrible. No, but you know those Funko dolls or whatever those little yeah. bobblehead things. They have Voltron. They have a Voltron Funko now. I oh. saw it today at Toys R Us. What don't they have? One of those of? All right, here we go. I'll, I'll do. I'll start the song and see if you can remember the the badass TV show that I want to go back and watch. Mister Belvedere. No. <laughs> Streak on the try. <laughs> no, that's not it. That was Mister Belvedere, wasn't it? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, I remember. Uh, well, I'm not uh, the uh, kind uh, to kiss and tail. That one, but I've taught ladies oh, plenty. Uh, Fall guy. Fall guy. Oh, that was that. I loved that show. I love that show too. My brother ruined that fucking show for me. Was because, he like Howie? No, because we would go out and we would play, and it was like when we were like, you know, my brother was like fifth grade, and I was like in third grade, and we would go out and play, and he's like, "I get to be Colt, you're Howie." I'm like, "I want to fucking be Howie." Mm-hmm. Be Howie. <laughs> I get to be. I have to be the shy. Bro. I'm Colt. So I'm like, <laughs> "Fuck this shit." What was the name of the girl? Heather Locklear? No. Was not Heather Marky Locklear. Marky Post. No. Marky Post was in that show. She could have been. Marky Post was the like the boss. Now, do you know who Marky Post is? Yeah, she was in Night Court. Yes. Yeah. A lot of 80s little childhood fantasies there. No, not her. Uh, for me, there was. But, Ale- but it was, I mean, it's, it wasn't sexual because it was just like, yeah, oh, like she was so just hot. really pretty. Yeah, she's pretty. Okay, well, okay, there we go. Who was your little crush when you were like... Pat Benatar. Oh, Pat Benatar in the Love is a Battlefield because she was like that, that like 80s rebellious badass. Looking back on it, she wasn't hot. No, not at all. No, I, I, I'm not saying that, but I remember like she was like all badass walking around her, like her tight pants and her short hair. And she's like, Love is a bad. And she's like, and I'm like, Oh, she's so badass. <laughs> <laughs> she's so badass. Uh, oh, gosh, she, she's so cool. <laughs> I wonder if she puts her in stressing with her carrots. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's fucking hilarious <laughs> oh shit I'm, i think mine was uh, all right my childhood all right if i'm really honest like i remember like getting like one of my first like i'm not gonna say a boner because it's definitely not where i'm going with this but oh. like that first kind of oh wow he hot like that kind of thing i that that was the pat benatar thing but um uh boy how about madonna in the like a prayer video mm, no do you, have you seen the Like a Prayer video? Yeah, a billion times. I'd yeah. never liked Madonna. I never thought, I never she, thought she was, was pretty. I never thought she was massively attracted e- attractive either, but I'm talking about like incidents or points. Now, do you want like that one when I was a kid? Oh, yeah, I got one. I got one. That, and this one hasn't actually changed, and I got to come up with the name, and this is actually embarrassing that it's not coming to me. Cool. Maybe I can help you. Um, And, and this, this lasts to this day is one of, I think, one of the most beautiful girls. This is why I'm like, I can't remember her name, and this is embarrassing. Um, what was the television show? My mind's drawing a complete brain fart right now. Alyssa Milano. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I, I had I, a big I had a big crush on Alyssa Milano growing up. I'm not sure. I was kind of like in and out with her, like eh. Not me. And she's hot now. Yeah. She's like a hot mom. Like a really oh. she's so milfy. I tell you what, like I like it, I mean, she does like uh for like the NHL catalog, mm-hmm. she does a lot of like modeling for stuff Oh my god, in just there. like a just like a shirt and, and like you're left to imagine she has nothing underneath her hockey jersey. No. Oh, that would be hot. Take off. No, take off, eh? No, but do, I mean, like, seriously, there's something to that look. Like, oh, I just have my jersey on. Do you? <laughs> no. Oh, but, but I mean, there's something that, like, oh, like, there's something to that. Uh, yeah, Alyssa Milano. That was one. Well, now see, she's around our age, so I mean, what Who about Punky chick- Brewster? No, oh, God, no. Oh, she's got really? a huge rack, though. No, she got she had breast reduction because oh, yeah. she was having a lot of problems. She would like fall over when she walked. What about Brandon? Brandon. The dog on Punky Brewster. Oh, so I, wow. Wow. No. Um, God, who was the one that was in um, Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Yes. Uh, dark hair. Yes. She was in Gremlins. Yes. What the hell? Who the hell was it? Phoebe Cates. Yes. Yeah. 
She was pretty. She's very pretty. And Winona Ryder went through a period too where she was pretty, but it wasn't. I, it was just she, short-lived. She has moments like where I think she's like she's been like real like, and then she's like mm, really pretty, and then she's like, and then she's like really hot. Yeah, yeah like she kind even of the older coasters. she gets, like yeah. she's one of those that gets. But beauty, beauty really does get better with age. You know, I mean, there are people that don't age oh. well, but true beautiful women, they they do age very. Well, I'll tell you very what, well. I I've even noticed with my personal like things that i i've liked you know i mean of course when you're going through your like 20s and early or late teens and your 20s or whatever and you are dating girls and stuff you of course you like girls around your age or younger or whatever and then for me it like seemed like the older i got like I mean, you're still attracted to younger girls, but like I started like really liking older girls, and I'm not talking like no, but that's what happens. Like older, older. No, girls, no, I, I know, but I mean, your your tastes change because as you get older, there's things you appreciate. Like, oh, absolutely. That, I, that's, like if that a has a lot to if do. If a woman's with it. had a child, that, okay, so your body's not perfect. You fucking had a kid. Yeah, but that's like, not who true. Though cares? that's not true. Well, it's not always true, but I mean, like, like my for wife, a lot of people, my wife, well, you would your wife's never, an exception. no, never I, know I, she no, had a kid. Your, your wife is an exception because she's she really treats her body well and works out and stuff like that. And you know, not everyone is going to go back to six pack, eight pack, whatever the hell she's got these days. Flat nine, stomach, nine all pack. that. Yeah, nine pack, nine puck, nine puck. <laughs> but I, I, but I mean, no, I mean, just like a typical woman to like see to see a woman who's had a child or two, you're not like, oh, well, oh, man, she needs to get better. You don't think that way because you're like, oh, man, fuck, you gave birth. Yeah. You know, I mean, good Lord. You, you know, if you... you, you well, look, I mean, I've seen other girls that have, like, who've had kids who've, like, done some sort of working out, but they still have a lot of stretch marks and yeah. stuff like that. But, I mean, that's like my wife, man. She's, like, there's not... She does not have one on her body. I think it's ridiculous. That, I think that... Uh, I think it has to do with how many kids, too. I think the more kids you have, the more likely that is to happen. Although there's surgeries for that. There's surgeries to like, maybe not to fix the stretch marks and shit like that, but there's surgeries to tummy tuck and do eh, shit like that. Yeah, but, but then. Why, I, I don't know. It just doesn't bother me. The older I get, like if I would have, if I'd have thought about that when I was younger, like, oh, I don't know, she's had kids and stuff. And now you, you're like, no. Yeah, that, that part of. Yeah, but that boy, yeah, of course. When, when you're younger, that shit would probably bother you. You'd be like, oh, no way, blah, blah, blah. But no, I just, older women are just way better. They really are. Okay, so when we were younger, who else? TV show, I got I got one for you. Okay. She was on a two different popular TV shows. Oh, God. Let me see. Marky Post. No. Oh, Heather Locklear. I never oh, liked her. Wait, so, complete side note, and then I promise we can get back to this. Richie um, Sambora's wife. They're divorced now. Right? So, I... Obviously, I, Valerie I have, Bertinelli. You know, obviously, I have that whole jailbroken thing. So yeah. I watched Baywatch the other day. Go, and I understand you're like really Pamela. No, 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 no. It's the <laughs> one with the, the sexy time. <laughs> <laughs> it, the the uh, <laughs> high five. The uh, no, the the new one with the rock. Not <laughs> the new one with the rock. Yes, I fucking heard it was, hilarious. Oh, I just I heard it was really bad. I thought it was hilarious. Well. Like I, I, cause the rock is the rock. He like walks yeah. around, he's kind of cocky and all that kind of shit. Like a bunch of one liners just tearing people down. It's fucking hilarious. Okay. So your point is what? Uh, well, no, you said TV shows and hot women. I thought Baywatch. I'm like, oh, wait, wait, wait. The rock actually was really fun. That Baywatch movie was actually, I thought funny. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Two shows. Two shows. One okay. was Buck Rogers. Oh my God. Aaron Gray. Yes. The other one was Silver Spoons. That's yes. Correct. Absolutely. Aaron Gray. Yes. I, I think she was my first one. Like I just, I, I forgot about that. That is a good one. Yeah. I just started watching Buck Rogers beep, again. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Buck. <laughs> Gil Gerard. Oh my what God. That name. whole, that whole, um, but you, tight white, like hot kind of sexy badass thing. Yeah. But, you know, I was even going back and thinking, there was a lot of, like, in the late 70s, early 80s, there was a lot of, like, weird space-themed, like, there was Buck Rogers, Battlestar Galactica, uh, what was that other one? Jason of Star Command that had Sid Hag in it. He was the bad dude. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Dude, I, I gotta meet that, some Sid Hag. That one, that tv show was horrible but i but it's sid Haig. yeah it did he was the bad guy they had to make a movie with sid Haig and that dude from machete 
Bachete. Yeah, what was that guy's name? The, uh, the one with the horrible complexion. Oh yeah, he's in. That's in everything. Yeah. Oh my God. Could you imagine a Sid Hag a Sid Hag movie with that I dude? I bet in? you there is a movie with the two of there them. There has to be some shitty B movie with that. There but, has to be. Yeah. So, but yeah, there was like, tons of these like sci-fi like, and that's I mean that's what we grew up with. You know, maybe that's why we're such big. I mean, because yeah, because then at that same time we had Star Wars coming out, and then we had Star Trek. We had. Uh, like I said, Buck Rogers, Battlestar Galactica, Jason the Star Command. Uh, I don't remember Jason the Star. Command. I didn't either, but if you watch it, it it'll jog a memory in your really? head. Yeah, like because I remember certain weird things about it. That's crazy. But uh, Thundar the Barbarian. I, I vaguely remember Thundar, but do you remember? Um, well, I'm sure you do. In uh, Toy Story. They do this whole thing where, like, Woody's like, "Well, then space came along, and or then we got, or then we landed on the moon, and everything was about." That is totally true. Nineteen sixty nine, we land on the moon. Think about <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> but think about that. E- everything from that point on was all star stuff. Like, you go back in the sixties, like Bonanza, you know, and and Little gun House smoke, the prairie, Little, yeah. And then you get to the ninth, then sixty nine happened, <laughs> <laughs> and 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 all of a sudden it's like Star Wars and Star fucking Trek. Con. That's about the only good thing about it. Uh, fanboys is about the only good thing about Star Trek. But yeah, okay. But I'm just saying. Well, no, okay. but then all that stuff too. It all became about sci-fi. But then 2001 okay. or whatever that one, Space Odyssey. Then the 80s became cop dramas. You got T.J. Hooker. Putting power. You got T.J. Hooker. You got Miami Vice. Yeah. Uh, Hunter. Um, yeah. Heart to heart. Uh, what else? Riptide. Do you remember Riptide? Vaguely, yeah, that big, that big fucking helicopter that they had. Oh no, I thought that was Airwolf. No, 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 no. Well, they had Airwolf. That was like a Magnum that was PI. a badass one. No, the um, yeah, absolutely. What else did they? God, yeah, it was all cop dramas and stuff. Yeah, uh, what else? Come on, there's Fletch. More. <laughs> I mean, that was a movie. That was one of the funniest fucking movies, but uh, ever. Um, then you had like the A Team. I mean, that was kind of cop MacGyver. MacGyver, he was kind of ish. No, you're right. Cop dra- chips. Ch- there, yeah. I mean, so then the '90s were more of like the family sitcoms, like The Cosby Show. You got the Friends, uh, Fresh Prince Miller. Yeah, Fresh Prince. Yeah. This is a story all about no, how it my isn't. life got it didn't. Upside no, it didn't. Down. Yes, it did. It got better for him. Well, it did. Mm-hmm. Just wait a minute. You sit right there. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you how he became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Okay, tell me. Well, it was let's Philadelphia. Discuss this. Born and raised have you ever on the been playgrounds there? is where he actually spent most of his I days. I know, but if you ever chilling been out, there, maxing, relaxing, all cool, shooting some b-ball outside of school with a couple of kids, and we were up to no good. They, they started do? started making trouble in his neighborhood. What did they do in the winter though? They couldn't really play basketball though. Well, you see, that's the problem. He got in one one fight, and his mom got scared, uh-huh. and she's like, "You're moving with your auntie and uncle to Bel Air." Okay, now that's on the other side of the country. I understand that. Okay, so but that happened during the winter. That's when he got okay. He, that's he got in a fight and his mom got scared, so he moved with his auntie and uncle in Bel Air. So he can play basketball all year, then. No, he can't. Okay. Well, maybe in Bel Air he might yeah, be able. Yeah, that's to. what I'm saying. Well, and his mom cared about him, so his mom okay. sent him to Bel Air to play basketball, so he wouldn't be getting into fights. Okay, and then what happened? Well, um, he finally arrived. Okay. Uh, cab pulled up. Dice in the mirror. I mean, if if anything, he could say that the cab was rare. But, nah, Holmes, forget it. He's like, yo, let's go to Bel Air. Mm-hmm. Well, pulled it, up to the house about seven or eight. Was Danny yelled De- to the cabbie, yo, Holmes, smell you later. Was that cabbie Danny DeVito? Was it Danny DeVito? I don't no, know. no, no, no. No, that was not Danny he DeVito. He didn't drive a taxi. He, was he didn't the, actually. He was the boss. He was the boss. Yeah, yeah. he was the boss okay. in taxi. All right. Um, no, no, Judd Hirsch. Was uh, was one of the taxi drivers. So so was Tony Danza. Oh, that's right. Yes, Tony Danza. Angela. <laughs> but unfortunately, Alyssa Milano was not in that taxi. No. <laughs> so anyway, he shouted, "Yo, home, smell you later." Mm-hmm. Looked at his kingdom. He was finally there to sit on his throne as the Prince of Bel Air. I see. Bum. That was a great show, dude. Come on, you have to come on. I know you don't like the hippity hops, but no, I I, I, I had Prince watched, watched the show. show. I had watched the show a few times. Will Smith is one of the greatest entertainers of our generation, like top five entertainers of our generation. Top five: Justin Timberlake. You're getting out of The Rock. 
Will Smith. Oh. Paul Rubens? <laughs> no, but they have a Funko with him also. Oh, geez, who don't they? I, they your mom? <laughs> no, your mom. They, they probably have one that they, we could fashion into the Admiral, though. The Admiral's got his own bobblehead already. Does he? Oh, that's right. You made yeah. him one. No, the work did. But, okay, so any? let's talk about uh, any other of our... Do you want to talk about sex, baby? Do you want to talk about you and me? <laughs> All the good things and the bad things that may be? No, well, now we're into the 90s sitcom, <laughs> so now we're, we're talking about a different world. Yeah. That was college-based. That was college-based. And then you get Saved by the Bell. Do you... Did you know that there was a Saved by Bell? When College we were, years. Bob no, no, Golick. No, no, no. Well, yeah, but did you know that when we were growing Bob up... Golick. When we were growing up... We got taller. We did. Our voices got deeper. Yes, they Some did. of us got pubic hair. <laughs> Pupilix. <laughs> but as we were growing up, like the first time I even thought about watching Saved by the Bell, they were already in high school. I had no clue that there was a middle school version of Saved by the Bell oh, until I, I was in college. That. Huh. I they, just well, they were doing reruns. I'm like, good lord! They, they, no, no, these kids were in high school at what, Bayside, you, yeah. and I'm like, no, they didn't go to middle school. I'm like, oh shit, they did go to middle. What the hell? What do you know about that? Look at Screech. What he's still a douche in middle school. Hmm. He did pornos. Yeah, he just killed a guy too, or stabbed him, or something. He's in, I thought he got in big trouble. But there's a shock. Dustin Diamond in trouble. Yeah, I think it was him. It was like some bar in Michigan or something. He stabbed some dude in the back or something. This was like a, Ask a last year. Well, I don't have time to do that, but mm. um, really, what did, about did Siri, Siri? Did Dustin Diamond shank a bitch? <laughs> Not a bitch. <laughs> a bitch. Searching uh, now. Dustin now, Diamond what about, did okay, shank a bitch. Now this. Okay, well, we've obviously evolved from when we were young children. So up till now, we're well, now we're into our our. Our mid teens. Wait, wait, hold on. We did skip <clears throat> the most obvious of all of those. Now, granted, it wasn't television. Uh, Slave Leia. Yeah, but we're t- no, we're sticking to television here. I understand that, but we did going back to the oh, original crushes, topic. Yeah, yeah Leia, Slave Leia. Yeah. Okay, that yeah, definitely. Okay, go ahead. Um, no, I was uh, I was going to bring up like now now that we've kind of well as we we were going through the nineties and we you know named some cop dramas and. Uh, then we're getting it, or sorry, eighties. Then we get into the nineties with the more family, you know, uh, what Cosby, is it? Co- yeah, Cosby, Cosby. Uh, the Michael J. Fox show, Family Ties. That was the eighties, wasn't it? Uh, I feel like Cosby started late. in like the mid eighties, also. Yeah, yeah, but, you're, yeah. But it definitely went into the nineties. Yeah. And then what, what was that one with Urkel? Family Matters. Yeah. Yeah, and then the Belky Bartakamus <laughs> show. Cousin Larry. <laughs> what, what, what was the show? Perfect, Perfect strangers. strangers. There we go. Yeah, that was Friday night show. What was the What was the horrible one with Bob Saget? Bob, Full House. Full House. That was good. That, oh, that that show was shit. Oh, I love that. I watched that. Lucas and I watched that show all the time. Like I that love, made a resurgence though. Yeah, but I like a I, lot of people are all about the Full House nowadays. No, see, I heard it was really bad, but I have not watched it. I I don't hated want to. that show because I feel like Bob cut Saget, it out. <laughs> I feel like Bob Saget is the least. What was funny the name of the dog on that show? Buster Comet. Oh, well, I, I just threw a name out there. Actually. <laughs> Stupid, stupid, stupid. Right, what else was in the nineties? Um, let's see. Well, you, uh, geez, I'm trying to think like stuff. Okay, this was one program that I love. Love. This is might be in my top. You can't do that on television. <laughs> did you watch that one? Yes, love that. that Alanis Morissette yeah. got her start on that. Yeah, I did like that show. I love that um, show. Double Dare. Oh yeah, absolutely. Fraggle Rock. Yeah, going old school. Fraggle old school. Rock. Uh, cartoon wise, then it dive into Ducktales. I love. I used to watch so much Ducktales. Yeah, that was a good one. But Pete and Pete. Yes, we talk. Yes, that is hands down like one of my all time favorite TV shows. Like I love that show. Like I remember you guys were big into that for a while. Oh my god, just, I I would watch that show like crazy. I just loved that show. I and to me that was like the only show that I was re- relatable to because I had a tattoo on my arm that danced, but I I really didn't. You you. It was I an don't. invisible tattoo. Yeah. No, I just. No, that was a good show. We we did that. that was college years, wasn't it? Where we would sit around and watch Pete and Pete and like Mystery Science Theater and Power Rangers. I never got into the Power Rangers, but were you gone when we did the when we were into the Power Rangers? Yeah, all I remember was it was 
High Noon for Mystery Science Theater. And then Power Rangers. But, and then there was Matlock in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my my freshman year of college, my Matlock, my another 80s yes, cop yeah, show. Yeah. Andy Murder, Griffith, She Wrote. Andy Griffith. Yeah. Um, and Opie Cunningham. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, you, well, you guys were at Kent. Well, you weren't at Kent yet, but you were going up there all the time. And I was at Baldwin Wallace still. And uh, my show was Bonanza. I got into Bonanza for a solid year. I know. Now we're busting old school. But like I would just sit there every morning from 10 to 11 and watch Bonanza. I would come back from my morning class and I would wa- lay down and watch Bonanza for an hour. What was the other show that he was on? Who? Uh, Michael Mike, Landon? Yeah. He was on, uh, well, he was on a lot of shows. Highway to Heaven. That was it. Highway to Heaven. And he was on was Little thinking. House Little, on the Prairie. Yeah, Little House on the Prairie. And he was gay. Yeah. Queerer than a $3 bill. Yeah. He was a hell of an actor, though. I know. I liked him. I did, too. And he was a badass. Father in Ingalls. <laughs> Father Ingalls. Could you? Oh, there's one. Who played Laura Who played Laura in that show? Uh, I know. I thought she was hot, too. And that's a weird one. That's like the Pat Benatar one when I was a little yeah, kid. Yeah, that like, is She's kind of cute. No. I'd, well, I never I thought know. she was. Oh, I can't remember her name. Uh, I, don't think she, I don't think she's attractive now. I don't think well, so. Well, it's like if you go to the Brady Girls. The Brady Bunch, like I didn't think any of them were. Attractive. No, I never, never liked any of them either. Florence Henderson, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alice, maybe. No, oh, no. no, Sam the Butcher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. Well, oh, then you got well, okay. Now we're now we're diving back again. Lost in space. Did you ever watch that? You know what? I didn't. I didn't really like it. Well, what about my, Land of the Lost? Yeah, that I, yeah that would but that was once again we're going into the eighties there but I no I'm, no no Land of the Lost was like 60s, late seventies no Land of the Lost absolutely not oh my god look that shit it up. might be mid seventies might be mid seventies look that shit up you got okay look that well shit up. you you carry the conversation here all right well uh, all right what else was there that uh, yeah uh, I'm really good well, at carrying this conversation no but like I'm trying to remember like when I was little and like well what did you do all right. Call out, you're not feeling well, your tummy aches. What did you do? What did you watch in the afternoon? Do you remember the afternoon? Yeah. I would watch Gilligan's would, Island. Well, no, it, but yeah, after four o'clock, but like during the morning, it would be all the game shows like right, right. $10,000 Pyramid. Press Your Luck. Press Your Luck. What was the card one? Card Shark. Card Shark. Uh, Family Feud, and then Price, Price is, is right, right at eleven. Yeah, and then it would be the news, and then we'd watch All My Children. Oh God, you did you you were forced to do soap operas? Yeah, no, my, like on Channel nineteen or forty three or one of those, they had they had the afternoon lineup. They had like Andy Griffith. Oh yeah. Then they had like uh, then they had Gilligan's Island. Yeah, and then Lost in Space was mixed in there too. Was it really? Yeah, I feel, I feel like because that was, that like was a only, Saturday thing. And like then my Saturday favorite morning, Martian, super host. my favorite Martian, Bewitched. Those, all, yes, yeah, Mister Ed, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but was the 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 ones that shot the oil, the Beverly Hillbillies? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that was kind of the precursor to Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Well, yeah, when you because the next thing story, you knew, old Jed was a millionaire, and uh, he told his kinfolk, "We need to move the hell away from here." Yeah. California. Well, see, that's, that's what where I you thought you were going with that no. story with that that. Fresh so they loaded Prince up guy. that tra- truck and they moved to Beverly Hills. Ladies. Now, do you remember the Weird Al Yankovic one where they did the Beverly no. Hillbillies song? No. You remember that? Nope. Ah, uh, it was uh, done to the tune of "Money for Nothing." Nineteen seventy four through nineteen seventy six was Land of the Lost. So, are we so- both right? Well, I'd said mid seventies. I no, it right you in started the late seventies, eighties. Yeah, but then I finished. We can record or go back and listen. When I went back, I said mid seventies. When said was 60s the movie? Seventies. Well, the movie was the one with Will Ferrell. That was like two thousand seven or two thousand eight oh, or something like that. You're so close. Nine. Hmm. But yeah, so yeah, those were the shows we watched, and then you would get into the evening, and you'd watch like Good Times. Uh, I never watched Good. I times. didn't. We watch it now. It's funny. Jeffersons. Yeah, Jeffersons is a good one. I never watched Sanford and Son. That I didn't like oh, that. Red show. Fox was hilarious in that show. Mm. He's the only reason to watch the show, but he was hilarious. In Different that show. strokes to move. Uh, do you remember Webster? Webster, yes. That was what was up. Thing. What was up in the 1980s where they're like, "Hey, look, these are little poor black kids. We're going to save them with rich white folk." Right. That's just the way the world was then. It's actually true, though. 
I talk about this in my classes, that if you actually trace uh, the history of the representation of black people in television, you have, um, and again, this is mainstream stuff. Dolomite? Dolomite, no. Dolomite doesn't quite work. Oh. Shaft? He's a bad mother. Shut your mouth. <laughs> I'm talking about Shaft. I can dig it. <laughs> but they, uh, like you start with like good times, you know, where they were living in the inner cities. And again, this is all reflection of the times. And then two, Sanford. 227? Two, <laughs> well, we'll get to that in a second. Oh, okay. But that was even projects. That was like yeah. early, mid 80s. But yeah. you have like the, the depiction of African Americans in the 1970s were uh, good times. The Jeffersons were moving on up to the east side to a deluxe apartment. And then you have. But he um, was a successful, a successful businessman with his laundromat. His dry cleaning business. Dry cleaning. Do you know where yeah. that show got its start? Uh, yes, it was off of. Uh, I know what shit. Well, I can't remember. Songs that made the hit parade. <laughs> All Alice. in the family. <laughs> oh, <laughs> guys like us, we had it made. That yeah, he was. That's right, he was on that show. He was the, the episode. I think, um, and I'm not 100 percent positive, but I think that episode was even called something like "There Goes the Neighborhood" or something. And the Jeffersons showed up and knocked on Archie Bunker's door. Oh, that body count song. No, <laughs> oh. that the Jeffersons knock on the door. No. Oh, there goes the neighborhood. Yes, there goes the neighborhood. I think it was something like that. But anyway, so <clears throat> then they moved to the deluxe apartment in the sky, and then they got the. But anyway, it was all about poverty in the 1970s, like uh, Fat Albert, bunch yeah. of bunch of inner city black kids playing in a junkyard, Sanford and Son. And then by the time you get to the 1980s, and this is why, as much as as much as you want to vilify especially nowadays, uh, Bill Cosby. The Cosby show was huge because the doctor, uh, he was a doctor. His wife was an attorney or something like that, I think. Like, it was an affluent black family. Yeah. Well, which he, was crazy because prior to that, you had little black kids that were poor adopted by white kids. You had black people living in inner city slums and tenement apartments. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, oh, wait, there's an affluent black well, family? And then, you, and then there's a rich one with the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And, well, and then you put after, directly after the Cosby show, you put a different world where you have this whole college experience with all of these yeah. African-American kids, you know, going to school and everything. And but African-Americans didn't in bulk start going to college until the early 1980s. Mm. Do the math on Barack Obama. I, I know, I know I get it, but I mean, do the math on Barack Obama, Barack Obama. He's think, not a math problem. He's a, He's a human, no, Joshua. No, but I think He's he was human. If I'm not mistaken, I think he was 18 in like 1980 or 81 or something like that. Oh, so he led he led the black people no, to go to no, but it typifies where African Americans have come because I think he was born in. Let's just say hypothetically, he was born in 1960, just to make up the number. Um, he was 18 in 1978 and was one of the first generations of African Americans to go in mass to college. And then you see how successful he became as a direct result of it. Because it's all about it all he was boils a down to education. Yes, he was a director. Director And action. George C. Scott. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what is your motivation? Now okay, so but what other what, weren't there a couple other like African American influence shows though? Like his like, like you're Dolomite? saying. No, that was a movie. Blackula. Blackula. Um, Leonard Part Six. <laughs> what was the one? What was the one? Oh God! What the fuck was that show? You realize we're not getting to this tonight. Yeah, I know. All this right. is much. This is much. This is much more. Fun. Yeah, this is better. Um, what the hell was the um, Buckaroo Banzai? Oh yeah, Buckaroo Banzai in the Fifth Dimension yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, that was. I don't remember. And that was Peter Parker. No, the the actor Peter Cushing. No, no, oh, I don't know. Peter. Oh God, darn it! Guy played RoboCop. Oh shit! I'm not going to come up with that. <clears throat> like ever. Oh no, no, I'm I'm completely wrong. I don't think it's that dude. Jeff Goldblum's in that. In no, RoboCop. In, no, in Buckaroo Banzai. Uh, I, I. How about Mailstorm: The Revenge of Jared Sin? Uh, you are, that is a foreign language to me. <sighs> that was like one of those movies that was on, it had Molly Ringwald in it. One of her first movies. Was she strangely attractive or no? No, because she had red hair and girls with red hair made me sick to my stomach. Like I, I could not, I don't know. girls with red hair just 
You know what it was? It was the Breakfast Club scene where... Diet. Once again, I've never seen that movie. Oh, you haven't? No. And you know what? People love that movie, and I'm like iffy on it. You know, I mean, I, okay, it's a good movie. It's whatever. The soundtrack, the song. Yeah, the music's Don't good. Don't you forget, forget about, about me. me. Yeah, I, I, I mean, the movie's good. Or, I mean, the soundtrack is good and stuff, or the couple songs that I know, but I don't know. What was the other movie that she was in that was big? It wasn't Breakfast Club. 16 Candles. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. But long Dick Dong or something like that. What? What? I, I, that's another one I've only I've only seen parts of. Oh, Long Duck Dong or so, whatever the dude's name was. How about Lamar in Revenge of the Nerds? <laughs> Hotel Coral Essex? <laughs> Hot Oral Sex? <laughs> that was Revenge we must of the... end nerd persecution. That was that was Revenge of the Nerds too, though. Yes. Okay, but we're now we're talking about movies. We're, we're, oh, we're you going go back, back to, to TV. TV. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Where where we got sidetracked here was we we were in in the nineties talking about Erin Gray. No, no <clears throat> yeah, we were talking about her, but uh, we were at Pete and Pete. We we're at oh jeez. Um, so then then how about South Park? Well, yeah, okay, yeah, because it's been that's uh, it's that Simpsons late 90s. too. Uh, well, I wasn't as big of a Simpsons. fan. I never liked the Simpsons. I didn't think it was that funny. Like it was like the whole Bart man crap that came out like i yeah, remember and the, thinking and, at that and, time like all right it's kind of i remember watching it on the tracy allman show yeah and thinking okay this is edgy and then it came out it came out the show for the first few years herman's was, head do you remember that show oh my god yes yeah that was a good one that was that was a great show oh wait 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 we're Get totally life. yes <laughs> <laughs> you know i was going right there man how could you like, not you were going we were doing shows. fox shows i know yeah one of the greatest shows ever get a life get a life <laughs> My submarine, Tony. Tony. Get it? <laughs> Frosted flakes. Because there's no substitute for breakfast. <laughs> what was that one with the five dollars? The five dollar bills when he was delivering papers and he laid them out on his bed. I don't. I don't remember that one. Oh, and he was like rolling around in the money. Do you remember? Do you remember <laughs> the one where he wanted to set a world record? So he was trying to get pre- basically pressed to death by seeing how much weight he could balance on his chest. Oh man! And they were just piling like washing machines and shit like that on him chris elliott is he is oh my so God, funny genius. man he, like i he, woogie he, <laughs> he's a fancy lad you know i think i think it's one of those things that if you actually go back and you start looking at all of the like the body of his work you would be shocked at all the shit well, he that was he's a, responsible he for he was a big time writer for david letterman yeah oh absolutely well yeah. he was on, and he was on snl for like one or two seasons yeah, he's but, got, I mean, he's he was a huge history. part in, in SNL, but I remember him being on that cast and thinking it was just going to be the greatest thing ever, and then they never really used him. Yeah, he's he's one of the I, I, most underrated comedic geniuses that's oh my ever God. been around. Speaking like, of comedic genius, I don't know if you saw my Facebook post. Mel no. Brooks turned 91 the other oh, day. Oh, yes, I did. It's one Spaceballs 2 coming out. It's not, is it? I think that was just a hoax. And that's not what <clears> I heard. <throat> Oh my god, that would be phenomenal! Yeah, I thought I, I thought I had heard Spaceballs Two is already in production. Is it really? Yeah. Oh my god, that would be phenomenal. Well, Rick Moranis doesn't do anything though. I mean, not that he necessarily has to because he got it. shrunk. No, Did, have you ever heard the Rick Moranis story? No, Rick Moranis. Okay, I'm going to disclaim this. It no, it's Rick Moranis. I was going to say it might be Martin Short, but I no, I'm, <gasps> no, it's not. No, him and, and Steve Steve Johnson. Here. No, oh, Steve Johnson. Sorry, Steve. Sorry, Steve, if you're listening to this. Yeah. Him and um, Steve Martin are touring. Not Rick Moranis. You're thinking... no Martin Short. Yeah, Martin, Martin Short, Short and yeah. Steve Martin are touring. They're coming yes. in like October. Yeah, they're coming or, to Nautica. I really want to go and see what that's all about. Hashtag. Absolutely got to go. They're playing some music. They're not playing music, are they? Do you not know that Steve Martin is one of the greatest banjo, banjo players yes, ever? Yeah. I absolutely know that. Yeah, The Jerk. The greatest movie oh, ever. One of the greatest movies yeah. ever. Absolutely. But anyway. They're shooting at these cans. <laughs> <laughs> Shithead, move. <laughs> <laughs> I was born a poor black child. <laughs> I got to watch that movie again. But anyway, no, Rick Moranis. I think it was Rick Moranis. He quit acting. God, why? I can try and remember. I thought it was Rick Moranis. He quit acting. Sorry. I and don't, again, I got to think about this. But um, he wanted to, his wife died and he wanted to raise his family. 
He wanted huh. to raise his kids and he didn't want to be away from them, didn't want to spend time apart from them. And so he quit acting for an extended length of time. That sounds like George Lucas. It was not George Lucas. Well, George Lucas may have done it also. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it was Rick Moranis. And they said he, this is why he hasn't been. When his wife died, he... Which, speaking of that, Gilda Radner and... and uh, God, who was Willy Wonka? Uh, Gene Wilder. Gene Wilder, as soon as Gilda Radner died, be- became like this crazy recluse. Because Gilda... Is that like him Randy and Gilda Quaid? Radner, well, no, because he was so heartbroken, allegedly, the story goes, over Gilda Radner's death that he just he didn't really have the motivation to do much anymore comedically. And let's face it, I mean, Blazing Saddles, you want to talk about greatest all-time movies, I mean, Blazing Saddles is, I mean, Gene Wilder was huge for a while. Stir crazy. Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. <laughs> Frankenstein. I mean, it, I mean, he was huge for a while. What and, then a- just, and then all of a sudden he's gone. And then he died. What, I last did. Year I did then? hear a rumor. I don't know where I saw it or where I heard it, but I did hear that um, possibly Strange Brew two. So, so Rick Moranis maybe back in the back yeah in the maybe flow. I don't know. And then who was the other? What did that guy play? That guy played in a ton of stuff. The other guy. My dad, I don't remember. I don't the, remember his name. Bigger but. dude. He was in a ton of stuff too. See, but again, now we're back on movies. Yeah, that that has to be a whole different episode. But okay, let's get back to TV. Okay, Who? here we are. Face now, to how about face, okay? A couple of silver, silver spoons. spoons. Now you know. Oh, do you remember who was in that? Here's your, here's your link to television. Okay, and that show was Alfonso Ricky Schroeder, Alfonso Ribeiro. Yep, who was also on Fresh Prince of Bel Air as. As uh, what was his name? Oh God, give me a second. Uh, uh, he was. Uh, oh, come he's on. got the dance. It's named on. after yes. him. It's called the. Uh, come on, come on. You can do it. I can do it. I can do it. <laughs> you can do it. You know it's. You know it's. And, and I give this up. Is, as I'm pro, as I'm processing this. The not the Charlton. Do, yes, Charlton. Charl, Charl, what was it? It wasn't Charlton. Carlton. Was Carlton. <laughs> Charlton's no, but they have the dance called the Charlton and also the Charlton. No, uh, um, Will Smith has done a bunch of stuff on uh, Graham Norton. Well, not a bunch, but he's done a couple episodes. It's like a YouTube thing now, and he did an episode where he brought like um, like he did the Fresh Prince Bel Air song, and then he also did one recently, and he had like he came out and he said something like this has had eighty million hits or whatever. He's like, so let's try this again, and he had his kid with him. Oh, I, Will Jayden, Smith, I can't stand that kid. Jaden, I don't really know. You know what movie him. killed it was uh, uh, whatever one they were in together. No, it was uh, the day. Uh, no, it was day it after day. tomorrow. Yeah, <clears throat> the remake. I never saw <gasps> it. There we go. There's another one right there. Uh, Jennifer Conley. What was she in? Oh, shoot, shit, man. She was. She's shit. like one of my favorites. She was in Labyrinth. Don't remember it. Was that the one with David Bowie? Yes. Oh, yeah. Still don't remember it. Yeah, no. She she was another one that was from the eighties that I just. But isn't it weird? You look back on the nineteen eighties and you, and those things that you were like, oh God, Aaron Graves. So if you saw a picture of her now in Buck Rogers, you'd be like, mm, Lily, ew, ew. Oh, she's hot. Yeah, she was in the the, the remake of Day After Tomorrow. Oh, uh, all right. Yeah, she's hot. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, she's really pretty. She party. But yeah. Okay, I, what about how how have we talked about television and not talked about the Dukes of Hazard? Yeah, that I that I think is a sore subject because You're not a Dukes of Hazard fan? I no, I loved it. It was Friday night was Dukes of Hazard, the Night Rider. So I no. mean yes. No, it was yep. Dukes of Hazard and then Dallas and then Falcon Crest. Because when Dukes, this we might be talking about two different generations of '80s television. All right. Because they, and this is how I know this, because I would get to watch Dukes of Hazard, and then Dallas was on right after Dukes of Hazard. So when Dukes of Hazard was over, it was bedtime. And then the the and then here here's another one that's kind of crazy, which is completely changing topics. But um, to this day, I hate the TV show Mash. Oh, that was on at seven o'clock every night. 
<laughs> until it went into syndication. And I knew that I could not fall asleep and that I was having trouble sleeping. Basically, I knew I had insomnia or an insomniatic ad- uh, episode. I don't in, know how to whatever. Insomniatic? Um, but I knew I was struggling to fall asleep when I heard the MASH theme song. And to this day, it drives me crazy. That and the one from Taxi. Oh, yes. Yeah, I was the same way too. Like my parents would have yeah. the TV yes. up super loud. And I would loud. hear them in the other room and, yeah. and I'd be like, oh God, I should be asleep yet. Or I should be asleep already. Uh, uh, it's horrible. Yeah, I, I totally forget about that. Like, yeah, those once again, then you go into Falcon Crust, Dallas. Uh, what was that one with uh, Knott's Landing? Knott's Landing, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, those were shows I never watched or anything, but. I got into Dallas, I don't know, early 90s, mid 90s, somewhere in there. I just started watching it. I don't know why. I just did. Then you get into the okay. So then, all right. Now we're we're going back into the nineties now. So we're, we're, we keep jumping around, and I apologize. Yeah, for but that's that kind of isn't that kind of the way this goes? Well, it's all intertwined because it's like one tangent leads to another tangent, and they're all like it, it might go. But from that's an what actor. makes this a great conversation. Yeah. And anybody that can follow yeah. this would be fairly impressive. Not that you're going to publish well, this. I, but. No, this this is a definite good one because like. I'm impressing myself for my knowledge of TV show names and actors and stuff because I'm really freaking horrible with like, like BJ and the Bear. Yep, that was another good one. <laughs> BJ and the Bear. Wow. Wow. Oh, see one. now it just makes me want to go back to television or back to movies. But that was Smokey and the Bandit. Yeah, the Smokey and Cannonball the, Run. Oh, not, yeah, God, those were those the, were so yeah good. those were all intertwined. In but a weird seemed, way. But but if you go to it, it almost seems like an era of of like almost a genre era era of fast well, cars. The and Death Race two thousand, the original one with David Carradine. Never that, saw it. Oh the, ooh. Was that on Superhost? No. Yeah. No, but that yeah, that fits in that fits in perfectly with that line of movies like Smokey and the Bandit, um, you know, BJ and the Bear, T V show. I don't even remember what the idea behind BJ and the Bear was. He was a truck driver. With a monkey. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember the general premise, but where the fuck were they going? What they were, were they doing? Were they like delivering groceries or something? They I, were delivering goods to stores goods. nationwide. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> were, they, were they trying to deliver a okay. case of beer to a really short dude? Here, really, oh, my God. That reminds me of The Toy. Did you ever see The Toy? Again, yeah. another movie. Oh, such a good movie. Jackie Here, Gleason and Richard Pryor. Here's another TV show that I really remember and no one seems to remember. It was called Tale of the Golden Monkey. Nope. No idea. And it was, I don't remember what the premise was, but it was a, a flying, it was an airplane that was like one of those water airplanes and they would fly around and they'd try to find this treasures and stuff and the the precursor to where in the world is carmen san diego i guess so but it was called the tale of the golden monkey no idea oh and then we had the ripley's believe it or not you oh, got that, that oh my too. god do you remember that's incredible yeah that's incredible yes that's incredible, that's incredible was, another good was one. amazing and, um, and they had those they had certain ones that were like all kinds of scary and they would have like haunted ones and things of that nature. You remember those ones where they were like, "Oh, the Toys R Us in blah blah Texas," and they they were like, there was like footage of ghosts and shit. Oh, yeah, there's always the footage of ghosts because that shit's With real. Fran Tarkenton. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? I got Fran Tarkenton. There was a, and there was a, a girl. There was a hot chicken, hot yeah. blonde chicken. That, and then there was another guy that was had perfectly coiffed and feathered hair. Oh man. They were all big names, yeah. but I don't remember. And that was also during the the height of the um Battle of the Network Stars. Yeah. Which they're bringing back. I saw that. I well, saw a commercial that, for that. that. And that was all started by the variety shows that were like the Dean well, Martin variety show. There, and yeah, but then okay, Lawrence Welk, the Mandrell sisters, uh Hee Haw. Duh, yeah, Hee Haw, um Donnie Marie Osmond. Um, Dean Martin. Dean Martin. What was the? Then there was that one, the show of all shows. Groucho Marx had one. Yeah. Now you're going. I mean, you're back going too way. Far, I know, though. but you're going way back. But then there was also what was the one that Goldie Hawn got her start on? Oh shit! Um, Laughing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I never. I Carol never, Burnett. Yeah. I never get into that. Yeah. 
Which is kind of crazy because all that stuff then set up Saturday Night Live, and Saturday Night Live is the only one that's really stood the test of time. Now, part of that's aged out, and part of that whole genre is different, but still, I, I don't know, still kind of cool. But um, I still maintain that when you take That's Incredible, that started off, I mean, it didn't necessarily start off because Ripley's Believe It or Not was part of it too, but that started off all those unsolved mysteries, America's Most Wanted, which I claim culturally has totally fucked up our society because when we were little kids you oh. remember we would ride our bikes everywhere we wanted to go now your kid leaves and you're like where are you going call yeah. me when you get there cops that was the show cops no you know what it was it was america's most wanted well yeah who, who hosted america's most wanted um that, that john walsh yeah who's who's famous a, because his kid got abducted, kidnapped yeah do you know that there's a theory that his son got kidnapped and murdered by jeffrey dahmer i did hear that but that is not true. I don't. No, think. I don't think it's true either. But it is an interesting side note. But there's, it, see, this is the thing that people don't process: is that we had no capital punishment for a period of time in the 1970s, and then in the late 1970s, and obviously well into the 1980s, when all those shows were coming out, there was a big rah rah capital punishment thing. And so, if you put this whole thing together and you start really contemplating and thinking about why that happened and how that happened, there was a push to punish people that were murderers. And so, you had all these TV shows that were like publicizing it. We grew up in an era in the early and mid 1980s, we grew up in an era where they publicized murder, mass murder, death, kidnappings. That's why I hold my kids so tight. I've thought about this. Like, I don't want my daughter just getting on her bike and riding it up the street. I'm afraid she's well, gonna, yeah. something's going to happen to her. But that was when we were <clears throat> older, though. At, at the at the ages of where our kids are at now. Yeah, like you said, your parents, I was walking to school when I was five years yeah, old. Your, your parents would kick you out the door and be like, "Be back at, when it's dark." You yeah, know? they wouldn't even think twice about it. Now it's it's completely different. But because, look at when they grew up. Our parents are baby boomers. Yeah, same thing though. They were the same way. It was they they. You Absolutely, know, but yeah, of course. And then, as technology has expanded, and with more more television shows, and then the internet and stuff like that, there's more access to information. There's more access to lots of different things to, to scare the shit out of you. Yeah, well, it's worked because I scared. Well, yeah, we're the same. I won't even shit. let the child ride down the street to his friend's house because I'm afraid he's going to get abducted yeah, by. I'll walk you. <clears throat> yeah, that's what I do. But that, but that's the thing. I mean, if you think about that, you know, I mean, that's when th those were formative years for us. Like, uh, you know, 1980, I was six years old. You know, so you go 1985, I was nine, going on 10 years old, and 85 and 86, when all that stuff was huge. And of course, you're going to remember that stuff. Of course, you're going to take that and you're going to internalize that as you get older. So, I, yeah, I'm not going to let my kid go anywhere. I don't, I don't know what kind of creep shows are out there. Creep shows. Creep show, good movie. Well, uh, well, what was the crypt kick, the crypt keeper? What was that show? It was that HBO that was show? Creep show. No, no, that wasn't no. Creep Show. No, Tales from the Crypt. Tales from the Crypt. That was another. That was another. What early was 90s. the show? The TV show. Was it like strange stories or oh, amazing stories? Yes, that was the one I've been trying to think about. When, I, when that was when I brought up. Uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not, yeah, Amazing Stories. Amazing Stories. Dude, I loved that I did show. Too. Yeah. And it oh. was creepy. It was like the precursor to Goosebumps. Shit. What was that one? The guy who would travel, he had this like little, like a little comm link thing. It was like a round thing and he'd open it up. It looked like a compass and he would jump through time. He was murdered Quantum or Leap? something. No. That was a phenomenal show, by the Shit. way, Quantum Leap. But then I think the actor ended up getting killed, so they had to cancel, cancel the TV show. But he had this like little... Little, this little compass thing, and he would flip it open. I and have he no would, idea. Oh man! Well, see, time travel was big for a yeah. little bit too. Not in a ton of shows, but Quantum Leap was huge. That was a I, great I show. I could never get into. I tried and tried and tried a thousand times on that show. Did you have you watched um, uh, Eleven Twenty Two Sixty Three? No, that's amazing. You know what it is, right? No, uh, it was a Netflix. I think it was 10 or 12 part miniseries type thing. It had James Franco in it. And it was, uh, I believe Oliver Stone was the one that did it. But anyway, the, the whole entire premise of it is James Franco's character is, uh, go, hangs out at this diner and this guy's dying. And he tells him that he's got a time machine through the back door, which seems so fucking lame and ridiculous or whatever. But it only goes he back. He had a time machine in his butt. <laughs> 
No, not in his back, not in his back door, in the oh. back door of the, yeah. But he, um, he said, just walk, walk down the hall, walk through the door. And it takes the guy back to 1962. And so he walks through the door and all of a sudden he's like, you know, it's 1962. And he totally freaks out, goes back into the diner, like, what the fuck just happened? And he's like, I can go back to 1962. And he's like, I want to stop the assassination of Kennedy. He's like, I want to track down Lee I Harvey did, Oswald. I, I did wanna... hear about this show. And and James Franco then is like, well, why can't we just go to that date? He's like, it doesn't work that way. He said, that will only take you to that time in 1962. He said, so you literally have to live a year, and it gives you a year to follow Lee Harvey Oswald, to figure everything out, and to stop the assassination of Kennedy. Will you do it for me? Because he was like dying of cancer or something like that. And James Franco goes back and forth and back and forth and then eventually decides that he's going to go ahead. He, fuck it. I got nothing to lose, right? Which I would do it. Like if, if I could go back and travel back in time and live a year. Here we go. Here's a tough question. Would you save Abraham Lincoln or John F. Kennedy? Abraham Lincoln. All right. Because he had a sweet beard. That's how this is all tied into the beard. <laughs> and done. <laughs> and, Cut. And cut. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would save Abraham Lincoln because I think, um, I don't necessarily believe that John Kennedy was a fantastic president. I think he's mired in mystique because he was the youngest elected president, because he was the first Catholic president. I think all of the Catholic population, which is massive in this country, absolutely positively just loved the whole Kennedy mystique and the Camelot crap, but I think if you All look right. at people that actually contributed, it's you go to you go to Lincoln. How does this dive into TV though? Oh, it goes back to eleven twenty two sixty three. Right. So he but spends that's... an entire year. It is just watch it. It's phenomenal. Okay, we'll and James it. Franco's amazing in it. But um, we're talking about classic television here now. That is classic television. It's watch it, and you'll understand new. why. It's new TV. Nude TV. We're not no. talking puernos. Totally are we? naked. <laughs> no, it's. I'm just trying I'm to like okay. Do Here, I got, I got, a, I got a great. I have a great angle. Kurt, Saturday morning cartoons. Okay, well, yeah, because the kids today, these kids these days, they don't have the benefit of they. They turn on Cartoon Network and they watch cartoons whenever the fuck they want to. Yeah, your Saturday morning experience probably consisted of a big old bowl of cereal. Started out in the morning with Hickory Hideout. Mm. You remember the Hickory Hideout? Yes, with the guy yeah. with one missing a finger. I'd never noticed he that. He did. He was missing a finger. Huh. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, was, yeah, and then there was, was at, like Looney Tunes, and then you had Gummy o'clock. Bear. Yeah, it was early, and then you had Looney Tunes for a half hour, which was like dead TV because it was like, all right, it's kind of funny. But whatever. that was the only thing that was on Sunday mornings was Looney Tunes early in the morning, and then that was it. Then the Waltons was on. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, John. <laughs> Good night, John boy. <laughs> Good night, Mary. No, oh no. Then it was Six Million Dollar Man was on Sunday yes, mornings. Yes, you're right. And then and the Hardy Boys. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh fuck. But yeah, when you went through the 1980s, like it parallels pop culture. There's like a Mr. T show. There was Pac Man. Rubik's Cube had a cartoon. Cubert show. Cubert. Yeah. Oh jeez. Yeah. Alf. The Alf cartoon. I mean, the Gordon Shumway program. The Gordon Shumway show. When you go back to Mel Mac, Snorkel Flats. <laughs> I, I never watched that. Wow, one. dude, I loved that one. No, that was that, that was, was a, little, a cartoon. It was. It was droids. Oh, that's right. It was droids. No, yeah, that's right. Yes, it was, it was droids. droids. But that was C three POs. Did you eat your C three POs cereal? No, no. never had C three POs. No, because I didn't really like that kind of cereal. Would you eat rice cripsies? No, fruity pebbles. <laughs> well, who f- does? Uh, come on, come on. Flintstones. There we go. Another cartoon. Here, here, here's one. Uh, fruity pebbles had a had a thing. Like, are you are you Team Cena or Team whatever? And one of them was fruity. Team Cena was fruity pebbles. And I don't remember what the other one, who the other person was, but the other person was Team Cocoa Pebbles. I'm like, who fucks Team Cocoa Pebbles? Who liked Cocoa Pebbles? Uh, I get them every now and then. No, but, but the no. only benefit, the only benefit. Was you get chocolate milk when you were done? Well, you could do that with cocoa puffs too. But yeah, that's right. Any of the chocolate cereals, you would get that. Yeah, but my my point is, if I'm doing that, I'm not fucking. I'm I, no. If I'm getting pebbles, I'm going fruity pebbles. The best cereal ever. All right. Have you have you had the reincarnation of the monster cereals? No. Frankenberry, Booberry, 
Count Chocula. Count Chocula. Did you that that was a whole thing. That's a marketing campaign. They're only available now during the holiday during the uh, Halloween season. Oh. Hey, seriously, if you go out to the store right now, there is no Frankenberry, blueberry, or Count Chocula in it's, October. It's blueberry, not blueberry. I said blueberry, didn't I? No. Oh, you said uh, blueberry. Um, but if you go in uh, like late September, early October, dancing down a disco, there will be a shit ton. Hi, fellas. There will be a shit <laughs> disco duck. Disco here, disco there. <laughs> no, no, no. Disco dancing. Yeah, that was uh, when I was. But just uh, what? What were your top five cereals? Well, no, no. I got a, a really funny story about the 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 Count Chocula, Frankenberry, and Blueberry. But I still remember when I was little, when you were little, like the greatest thing in the world were all the cool things you could get in a box of cereal. And it was always about like getting the box of cereal and you wouldn't even eat the freaking cereal. It was all about getting whatever prize was in there. And one of my favorite things that I got was, because uh, <clears throat> I liked, uh, I didn't like blueberry. And I was not a fan of Count Chocula, so we'd always get the Frankenberry because I was a berry kind of guy. And attached to the box of cereal was a record, a paper record. And I used to listen to this thing all the time, but it was Monsters Go Disco. And it was, I I could almost like verbatim, like repeat the whole entire thing back. But I, it just makes me laugh because... The, all the monsters are sitting at the monster castle on a Saturday night, and they all decide they're going to go to the disco. And the story takes place of them at a disco during a disco dance contest. And yeah, so and it basically turns into like a a five minute commercial for kids to buy these cereals and stuff like that. So, but like I said, it just. Back then, it was all about like even going to McDonald's with Happy Meals. I was meals. just going to say the Happy Meals. Did, yeah. you, did you ever get the saucers? Do you remember the the, the Happy Meals that I had the, the boats? You, yeah, yeah, they were plastic boats. They had a top yeah. and a bottom. Yeah, they had flying saucers that were like that too. Oh, I don't. remember. Did you ever that. have the little McNugget toys that that they came, they came in the little McNugget containers and you, they had like pirate costumes Maybe. and shit like that? Maybe. The toys were badass. Yeah, everything was cooler back when we were younger. Now they're all shit. Everything they really are. sucks. Uh, have you? Has, has Lucas had? Uh, has your your anyway? Yeah. Uh, has Have you ever had a Happy Meal from Arby's? No. Or whatever. We don't, we don't go to Arby's. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you get? A fucking cardboard thing that you have to like put together and falls. It's a piece of shit. Arby's kids meals are shit. They're, they're like here. Here's a bunch of cardboard. Make it into a robot kid. And you're like, oh wow, this is dumb. But I mean, it's, okay. Oops, what are you gonna sorry. do? I, hold on. Bid for sorry. No. Well, you might get Bush as a sponsor. No, I don't. Well, well, well. you don't like Bush? No, I do. I mean, it's <laughs> we've got Bush. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> uh, okay. no, McDonald's. Yeah, I was actually. It's funny you mentioned that because I was just thinking about that too. That like the marketing that they did. And this is all this is all shit that's fun to talk about because because there is a uh, there's a huge cultural connection to all of this stuff. And again, I this is my sociology psychology background that I've got. There is such a huge connection to the baby boom and to the way that we were raised and to the like our parents were the baby boomers. And so our parents raised us. Our parents were the first ones raised on television. Do you realize that? Like our parents were were the first ones that actually woke up and had television on a regular basis and and they didn't get it until they were i don't know probably even eight ten years old but they had all those shows those kind of fun shows that were kind of catered to them and like the honeymooners i've seen this episode 20 times yeah all right mom (laughs) and uh yeah but i mean you know then we grow up and we got we we got to experience the tail end of that because if you look at television now and cable changed this whole freaking thing as soon as you could watch whatever you wanted, whenever you wanted, it changed. But we used to actually have to get off, off our asses off the couch and turn the channel. And we had five or six different options, and that was it. We had three channels, and I still remember our first color TV. We had a black and white Hey, TV. hey, hey, hey. This is not a racist. This is not a racist podcast. <laughs> no, I know that, but I Your mean. Your first colored TV. Oh, shut up. <laughs> no, but I still remember like when we got our first color TV. Uh, we had... 
shit, man. I think it was like when I was eight, seven or eight. I remember having a black and white TV. And that's what I said, like watching Lost in Space. I remember watching uh, MASH. I remember watching like all those shows. It was all black and white for me. Do you remember having to tune in, like the like have to press in the little thing within the dial to kind yeah, of tune, to in, tune the, it in a little the, bit yeah. more? And you'd have the, it'd still be fuzzy. Yeah. Now, here's one. Here's, here's some. Local nostalgia based on the channels. The antennas? To get the no, Cleveland no, 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 Browns no, no. games, you'd have to tune the antenna to Detroit? No. <laughs> yes, I do remember that. When uh, when MTV came out, yes, channel 61, for like a couple hours a day, would have music videos. And since we were like poor, we didn't have MTV. We didn't have cable. Yeah, we did, yes, we were the same So way. you would have to turn in, you would have to tune in channel 61 and you would get like a couple videos. Like there was like an hour or two hours of music videos that you would get. I also remember feeling extraordinarily uh, blessed in a sense that if I went into the library on the right day, I could rent a VCR. Oh, that reminds me of going to the video store and being able to rent... Video Wizard? Yes, and yep. being able to rent a Nintendo. And, gosh. Yeah, that was that was big, big, big time then, you know, to be able to rent a video game system. But, yeah, I do remember... I, I can even tell you what my first... When we got our VCR, our first VCR, do you, do you remember what the very first movie that you rented was? No, I don't. Dune. I remember. Dune I have. I have ours. a couple, um, like flashbulb memories. I remember we used to go up to Video Zone, and we would rent horror movies left and right, like Faces whatever. Of death. No, 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 nothing like that. Um, but things like uh, <laughs> I, I don't know, Evil Dead, all right, Evil Dead Two, you know, uh, all the Friday the Thirteenth movies, stuff like that. And then um, we decided, because it was always there. Porn. No. Close to it, though. Rocky Horror Picture Show. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, it's in the horror section. Okay. I've never wondered what this is. Like, I put it in. And I love the movie now. But I put it in. And I'm like, what in the holy hell am I watching? Because here I am, like, eight years old or nine years old or whatever the hell it was. I'm, like, expecting blood and guts and gore. And I see Tim Curry as a transvestite singing. Which is one of the, I mean, I love the movie now. Still never seen it. You've. Ne- I love it now. Speaking of Tim Curry, any idea where I'm going to go with that one? Speaking of Tim Curry. Yes. I am your singing telegram. Nothing? Nope. Clue. Oh, from Tron. Clue the movie. Oh. No, Clue oh. the movie. Oh, I thought you were talking about Tron. No, I, I, you know I've never seen Tron. Oh, there you go. Clue. No, no clue the movie <laughs> oh okay well we're in two different places here. we really are but anyway the one of the first movies i remember watching on the rented vcr from the chardon public library is uh christmas story Ooh, yep that was 1985 ish or something like that but i remember going up there and getting christmas which is why to this day i still have an infatuation with that movie i mean the cleveland that's where I, that's where we rented my first movie dune was from the library that yep. was fantastic that was cool. And you got the thing that looked like a suitcase and you brought it home and plugged it into the... Actually, back then, I think you had to take a screwdriver and you actually had to put the little the little Y things in and you had to tighten the screws. Please be kind and rewind. Yeah. Or you could buy a little apparatus. You just yeah. didn't want to mess with it. You just put it in there and rewind yeah, while you, you started wanna, your you, next video cassette. Well, that's right. Because you don't want to burn out your motor on your uh, that's right. VCR. That's right. How pissed off do you think beta people are? I guarantee there's people that still have beta today. They probably laser don't use di- them. A laser disc. Oh my God! Those people. They, they those people the are on a gold mine right now. Why? Because they're super collectible. Laser discs. Yes, I see them all the time. Uh, they're okay. Here's a, here's a little known fact. Star Wars, the original Star Wars, was released on laser disc first. Oh, really? Yeah. So, and it's I know some guys that have a copy of it. The original and, Star Wars on, on laser disc. Yeah, <clears throat> and it's I think it's. It's from an. I think it has to be from another country or something. But this is all just. I'm looking this up on eBay. All the memories I'm having from like years and years and years ago because mm-hmm. I remember having a conversation about Star Wars and you know this is before VHS and all that shit. But oh, speaking of laser disc thrashers, 
they used to have a humongous collection of laser discs. I would always remember walking in there and seeing all these things. I'm like, what are they like records, but they're movies mm-hmm. on a record, but no, but if you can find like laser discs, they remade them. Yeah. Like they have the they have the trilogy on I'm, a six laser disc set, widescreen format, and it's like from the re release. Like like the what was it, nineteen nineties re release? Like with with the was, shit that everyone thought that George Lucas fucked up, like like Jabba being able to move and walk. I around. thought that was after the first three or the first one. I thought that was after the they released the the second trilogy. Huh. That he did the maybe I, I I don't remember because technology was finally caught up. Yeah right. Oh, speaking of which, which I don't even want to go into because then that's diving into a whole other topic. But I'll just talk to you about this after okay. the fact. But um, all right. Well, I guess we can kind of like wrap up the whole. Why? I mean, I'm, I well, I mean, because we're we're get, we're going off on too many different tangents. We're we'll going back to, to TV. Okay, go. Saturday morning cartoons. Okay. What else? The Littles. Do you remember that? Oh, one? I do remember The Littles. That was fantastic. I actually, that was one of my favorite shows uh, when I was growing up. Tailspin. Tailspin. The name's familiar. It was, it was, uh, it was the, the same concept as like uh, uh, DuckTales and stuff. It was, yeah. it was Chip and, oh, Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. Yes. That was Tailspin after, that was, was Baloo. School. Oh, the bear. Mm-hmm. Tailspin was Baloo from... He drove the... He flew the airplane. Yeah, the big ass fucking yeah. airplane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about this? You come home from school. Okay. What did you watch when you came home okay, from school? Okay, I can tell you this one. I, okay. Okay, it was Transformers. No, Transformers was on in the morning. G.I. Joe was G.I. When Joe, came that home. was the one, yes. Voltron. Uh, it was, yeah, it was... In the okay, in the morning it was Heathcliff, Transformers, Heathcliff and Marmaduke. <laughs> Do you remember the the combo there? No combo package. No Heathcliff. Then it was Transformers, and then there was one more. Because the bus didn't pick me up till eight thirty, but I'd have to get up at six thirty every morning to watch cartoons. And that's oh shit! What was it? It was the Jimmy Baker show. Jimmy, like the preacher? Yes. <laughs> If you masturbate, you will get hair on your hand. God will strike you down. <laughs> yes, the Jimmy and Tammy Faye Baker. That bitch cried a lot. I know. Um. So then, seven o'clock was Heathcliff. Seven thirty to eight was uh Transformers, and then I would get ready. Something like that. There was some like shave your beard. No, because that was I that wasn't growing yet. No. <laughs> oh, so, was when you so then three. you got you get home, and it, I had an hour bus ride home, so I didn't get home till you could have walked. I, yeah, I could have walked home faster than that. I was like the last one dropped off. But yeah, I'd get home at four thirty, so I'd miss the four o'clock. 30. Yeah, jeez. So you missed uh, for the longest time. It was um, Ducktales. Yeah, was duck, on I'd there. catch. Yeah, I'd catch. Which the was a very solid tales. Nintendo game. I don't know if you ever played the Ducktales Nintendo game. I think I did, game. but it that was, was a good. solid game. You're yeah. Ducktales, then Chippin', Chippin', Rescue Rangers. Yeah, they were. And whoa, 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 whoa! Then you have Animaniacs. That gets, which is one of the greatest cartoons that gets ever. in there. That you know was, they have a Yako, uh, a Yako, Wacko, and Dot Funko. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? I would have never guessed that. <laughs> Shockingly, shocking. Oh, Animaniacs was so good. Oh, it was actually cutting edge too. Because Pinky in the lot. Brain, I love that. But there was a lot of stuff in. Um, there was it was like Looney Tunes. If you go back and watch Looney Tunes now, there's a lot of adult humor in there. I, I like remember they dropped their nuggets. Like people are like, oh well, you know, if you watch, uh, if you if you watch uh, Little Mermaid, there's a penis in the, and the. Uh, they were dropping shit left and right, jokes left and right in Looney Tunes when we were little, and we just we didn't understand it. Which is the depth of humor those shows actually had, which is kind of crazy. Let's see. What else? He-Man and Thundar the Barbarian. Oh, yes. No, He-Man, Thundercats. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was that little shitty... Orko. Is that what it was? No, uh, no, He-Man? in He-Man. Yeah. Or little... not in He-Man, in Thundercats. <laughs> Lion-o! Oh, Lion-o! 
snarf, snarf, snarf. <laughs> snarf, snarf. That's right. It was, it was snarf, His snarf. His name was Snarf. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, snarf, snarf. That little fucker would have gotten kicked. Thundercats and Voltron were the same freaking in... Uh, there was a, another one. Well, Robotech, too. Robotech was in... I Robo- remember that one. Robotech. Oh, my God. Do you remember Mask? Yes. That was one of my favorites. That was good. Bruce Sato, lifter on. We... Matt uh, Tracker. <laughs> we did... Stiletto on. <laughs> we did a... Uh, like, my brother and I used to make... <clears throat> take Legos, and we would make mask-type vehicles Why don't you Legos. just buy them? We had them. Oh. We had them, but, like, it was, like, our, our height of creativity. Oh. So with Legos and stuff. So we would sit there and we would make cars and then like you would have like the little hinge things and the hinge would come up and like a little gun would come out or, you know, it, would, it was like a train. Yeah, it was like Transformers. Well, uh, it wasn't Transformers, but it was kind of like Transformers. No, yeah. Mask was I, that was that was the one show I really liked. And I did that one to this day. I don't know why they're not making into a movie. Mask? Yeah. They're, I what, heard they were going to. I mean, they're looking for so many ideas for shit to do. Let's, but that would let's do but that. That would be that would be good. Yeah, mask would be really good. But it would hit a certain <laughs> genre. Like, do you like they haven't had a, they haven't had a Thundercats movie? Gem but and Gem. I don't know if I actually would go see it. Gem. I wouldn't see that. That was another more. That was another morning cartoon to to. And you're missing the greatest the, morning cartoon or the greatest cartoon ever created. Let's see if you come up with this your, one. Your mom. No, your mom. Oh. The Admiral. Mm, let me the greatest and wait, and, give me just right. give me some hints. Give me some real subtle hints. I'll get it. I'm not giving you any hints. The literally the greatest cartoon that was ever created. And we have not talked about it in any way, shape, or form. Oh, I'm thinking of another one, but it was um laugh olympics no but that would be top five for sure what was the one with spider-man firestorm and iceman i don't know but also in that top five is something that reminded me of which is Uh, super friends yeah super friends super friends was amazing but you're still missing huh am i hot or cold you're in the era, and actually, with uh, Laugh Olympics, you're you're fairly close. Jabber jaw. Nope. Um. Let's see. We got Jabber jaw. We got Grape Ape. We have. You're missing. Um. Oh, am am I even warm? Uh. Well, we're talking Laugh Olympics. We're, we're I'm warm in the Hanna Barbera. Yeah, it's Hanna Barbera. Okay. Hong Kong Fui. Nope. We got, um, let's see who else. <laughs> was it Speed Buggy? Speed Buggy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was the other one I was trying to find. I'm like, <laughs> the one with the car. Okay, but then we have. Uh, Missing it. You are, you are uh, swinging for the. Dino Mutt and. You are swinging for the fences. The Blue Falcon and, you and are, Dino Mutt. You are, you are swinging for the fences and you are bunting right now. Oh, shit. Um, it was Scooby Doo. Thank you. It's fuck you. <laughs> Scooby Doo is the greatest cartoon ever created. Yeah, well, I, uh, I did watch probably pretty much all of those, but and it was one that I did look forward to every day. But um, are you kidding me? It was the greatest cartoon ever created. Why? Why? Um, you had mystery. You had <laughs> Daphne. Ex- excitement, adventure. You had. Daphne? A Jedi does not crave these things. You had Daphne. Daphne had red hair. Once again, red-haired girls are gross. You watch Scooby-Doo, and you tell me that, that Daphne's not hot. I, I never thought she had red hair, dude. I don't dig red-haired chicks. You married a red-haired chick. That was in my exception. She was <laughs> fucking hot. It automatically destroys your, I don't dig red-haired chick. Shawnee, I hope you're listening to this. Uh, and then I always tell her that because she's the only red-haired girl I've ever, ever, ever thought was attractive. Like, when That's I saw That's a huge her, compliment. I, well, it is because I don't know what it was about her. Just everything about her was just... And she had red hair, which I... You discounted. I don't know. But, I mean, but still, I still think red-haired chicks are gross, other than my Daphne, wife, Daphne who I think not. is the hottest Daphne's chick ever. Gross. 
Daphne's mm. hotter than Aaron Gray. Okay, but what about no, oh, no, a cartoon? <laughs> no, no. We, we we went kids perspective there. <laughs> I'm still going Punky Brewster. No, just because she has huge knockers? She doesn't, though, now. They're gone. Soleil Moonfry. So, oh, I, there you go. <laughs> mm, moon fries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. No, I... I ye, God. I, you weren't a big Scooby-Doo fan? Like, the whole mystery, the whole mystery thing and stuff like that? The whole... And then when the Harlem Globe, Globe, Globe Trotters and like the Three Stooges and then Batman and Robin and uh, who else? Come on, Kiss. Come on, who else? I don't think Kiss was ever on there. Uh, no, that was a. They did it something eventually later. No, you're missing. You're, uh, um, oh God, Van Dyke. <laughs> what the hell is that guy's first name? I can't. Dick. Dick Van Dyke was on there. <laughs> how about how about this one? Jerry Reed. Remember that one? Pretty yeah. Mary Sunlight. And they're like running away, and, and Jerry yes. Reed's like saying, "Oh my God, those are classic. They are funny. They're not even. They're not even funny. They're great. What about getting out of the cartoon aspect, but like, what about the banana splits? Great creeped space coast. Out. Great space coast. Creeped me the fuck out. <laughs> banana splits is the no creepiest. news is good news with <laughs> Gary Gnu. <Gnu. laughs> no, I and I used to watch that every morning before I went to school. Yeah, that was another one. That was when we were really little, though. Before I walked to park. I would watch the Great Space Coaster, and if it ended, that meant I was going to be late to school because I had to leave before it ended. Mm. So it must have ended at like eight thirty or something like that, or eight, or it must have ended at like nine o'clock. Shit, I don't remember. But it's 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 Romper Room, Barnaby. No, I hated those. Bar- no. I think Barnaby was a, a a pedophile. No, he that was a local. That was Barnaby was local, but people don't realize that. Like we we all grew up on Barnaby. Or at least knowing that it existed. Well, in and Captain Kangaroo. We... Yeah. Why did the ping pong balls drop? I don't rem- I don't even rem- I barely remember anything about Captain Kangaroo other than his uh, hair. His hair and he was creepy and, yeah. he, and he looked like he was a child molester. Yeah. And then what else? Who was have... Barnaby? Wasn't Wasn't he a decent wasn't he an act, like a an actual actor? No, he was just he was a local, he was just like local a news dude. guy or something. Kind of like a Mr. Jingling thing that like yeah. our parents talk about, but I don't fucking remember. Mr. Jingling, and once again, another local thing. That's the same thing. Well, Cleveland was huge. Was. Well, no. I, and then I the Browns like came. They, well, then they left, <laughs> and then they came back. And then we got the Cavs. And, and, and the engines. Um... But yeah, what? Uh, oh, how about this one? Um, uh, the monkeys. Not. I'm I not, love that though. I'm not talking the monkeys though. I'm talking about. If you're, if you're going back to banana splits, I'm gonna fucking donkey punch you. But that that's that shit's creepy. Look that shit up on YouTube. That shit's I know, creepy. I know it is, but uh, God, it was. I think it was on banana splits. The monkeys. Uh, what was it? Oh goodness gracious! Um, Lancelot Link in the Evolution Revolution. I've heard of it. But Hell I yeah. never I heard of it. I landed I never that saw one. It. You I did. Landed, that was like a somersault, and I I kind of wobbled. You the stuck landing. the landing. No, you didn't. Wobbled I mean, it. like your 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 knees bu- uh, twitched a little bit, yeah. but I mean, it was it was still good enough to to get a ten out of the Russian judges. Oh, that was the Ukrainians would give you a nine point five. Though. Lancelot Link in the Evolution Revolution. Now I loved that one. Oh, Man, there's so many there. I mean, there was so many different and great th- and. Now, when you watch the programs or the cartoons and stuff that your kid watches now, do you get that same feeling? There's some. There are a couple. The Amazing World of Gumball cracks my oh, shit up. Oh, my God. We were watching that in the hospital the other day. It's funny. I was losing my shit with it's, that one. It's funny. It's a good show. Well, um, uh, what is it? Uncle Grandpa? I, I hate Uncle Grandpa. All right. That one's It's yeah. corny and stupid, and I kind of fucking hate it. Um. What's, I will when when Juliana's growing up, I thought SpongeBob was entertaining. But that was when she was watching like Dora the Explorer, and I'm like, oh God, I want to poke my fucking eyeballs out. That and Nihao Kai Lan. She used to watch that all Nihau, the time. Uh, Hao, she, she. Oh God. Because they be, Dora would be like, Hey, Boots, can you say five? And he's like, pause for like 30 seconds. He'd be like, five. And you're like, oh God, please fucking kill me. So then any chance I had to watch something that was normal-ish, like SpongeBob, 
It was awesome. And then when she got older and, and the Amazing World of Gumball was introduced, I was all about the Amazing World of Gumball. Adventure Time is hilarious. I still haven't watched Adventure. I know a lot of people that really like. Oh, my that God. Show. There was an episode. One of the This is what sold me on it. There was an episode uh, where, what is it, Finn and what's the dog's name? I don't even remember. The Rex. It's, no, it's not Rex. But whatever. Billy. Jake. So Jake was... From was State like, Farm? No. No. <laughs> Khakis. <laughs> She sounds, but, <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, Jake the dog is like in like this giant's pocket or whatever. I don't remember really what it was, but and this was literally, I think, like one of the first episodes I ever saw. What is this show? And then Jake's like nuzzled up, and then all of a sudden, you hear this. <laughs> I'm just like, Are you kidding me? That's awesome. And she uh, was laughing her butt off. It was just, it was, it was funny. I'll tell you what, our favorite regular one, show is good. Four words for you: regular show. <laughs> oh, the regular show is good. That is the best one. I love that one. Uh, to me, the the best show out there for kids today is the Amazing World of Gumball. Yeah, that, I think Gumball oh, is absolutely freaking hilarious. Yeah, it was a really confusing show when I was. I, I've watched it in the past, but when we were at the hospital the other day. Um, the volume was on very quietly, right. so just watching it, I was very confused. Did you? Let me ask you this: Go back in time. Okay, I'm doing it. Time back machine. Do you have your compass? Yep. That we don't yeah, remember that the show. Fucking show. But um, no, go back, go back in time, and tell me when Dad became the punchline. What do you mean? Dad's a dumbass is big. Dad is the butt of every joke. It used to be. Wait till your father gets home. Or like in Leave it to Beaver, it's like, oh, well, I'm going to tell your father or when your father gets home. And now all of a sudden, dad is the butt of every jokes and he's a dumbass. Richie Rich. If you watch that one. No, I haven't. It's, a, it's That's It right there. That that show right there. Richie Rich. Richie Rich. It, um, not, t- not the cartoon when we were younger. The movie? No. There's a Richie Rich. I don't. It's on Netflix, but. Um, but yeah, the dad's the dumbass. In the show, and it's the dad. There's no mom, and uh, it's the son and the daughter. I don't know. Lucas watches it all the time, but um, the, yeah, the dad's the dumbass. No, so, but like in mainstream yeah, television, because no. I've never seen that. <clears throat> but the kids like that's a very popular show. But when when did dad become the butt of the joke? Because even if you go back to different strokes in Webster, the dad was the the moral father figure. He was the one that was to be respected. He was the same thing. It was the same. Was Mr. Bill Belvedere. Drake on the China. So, but but Mr. Bel okay. Mr. Belvedere is queer than a three dollar bill. But was he? Oh, that's allegedly. What was the dad? Who was the dad? Oh shit! Mm-hmm. You should know. You should know, motherfucker. You out on there? Come on. Um, think of, think of, the movie. Oh, 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 hold on. Come on, come on. Just a bit outside. Oh, yeah, you can do it. You can do it. He was in in Major League. Oh, Bob Euchre. Oh, my God, I forgot about that. He was the dad. My God, when we were little and we were doing the whole baseball card thing, like, you had, like, these... You had the whole thing with, like, Pete Rose cards and Mickey Mantle cards and shit like that. But Bob Euchre had like a cult following in baseball cards. Like his rookie card actually brought money. And you're like, well, you want a Bob Euchre rookie? Like, oh, hell yeah. You know, it was a big thing because of that fucking show. <laughs> but he's hilarious. Like, oh, yeah. He's, yeah, he's great. He's iconic. But, but not for that same, not for baseball. Wesley. That was the name of the kid. Wesley was that the kid had to be, the, he's got to be gay. <sighs> Man, I don't, I don't remember. I'm, <sighs> I, rem- I, I remember watching that show a lot. I loved that show I did for too. some odd reason. My favorite show, remember. it goes back, to, and again, I know I'm going back to Aaron Gray here, but I'm, I Buck go Rogers. back. No, no. Silver, Silver Spoons. Spoons. I loved Silver Spoons when I was growing up. Like the dad on the little train that went through. Like it was just that idea of like rich affluence and stuff like, and stuff like that. Hmm. I don't know. That, that was that was the one show. Like when I was growing up, that was Silver Spoons was huge. I used to love that show. Fall Guy, Dukes of Hazard, shit like that. That we that we already talked about though. Wonder Woman. Do you remember that? Did you see the new movie? No, not yet. It's 
good. It's not as good as people claim it is. Don't go see Transformers. I know. We talked about that. No, you know what, though? I'm not really a big... It's never a big Wonder Woman. How about the greatest American hero? How the fuck did we forget that one? Oh my yes, that's right. That yeah, that because we both show. loved that show. Yes, that was that was eighty two, eighty three, yeah, something like that. A few seasons. Well, oh, Light Man. Do you remember that White show? Man? Light. No, I think that was like a one season thing. He was like a comp- It was like Tron. It was all based off of Tron. And yeah, but I didn't like Tron. I never saw it. No, I know you didn't, but it was it was a series, and it was this guy who gets like he could like transport himself into a computer or whatever, and and make himself. Did he use a compass? No, and that's the same time as Knight Rider, which is another show we never brought up. No, we did. Well, the, and the, it came up, the, but it was in, like in our in our. Uh, okay, think TV about th- think. think about this though. In that span of the eighties. How many of those TV shows had influential vehicles that are? Every one of them did. They made they made Hot Wheels out of almost every single one of yeah, those. But, the I A mean, Team and yeah, the a, you got the A Team, you got Knight Rider. Generally, yeah, Dukes of Hazard. Uh, come on, what else? I know uh, Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, there's that. That that was seventies though. Yeah, but and then and but then you also had Magnum PIs. Uh, yeah. What was that? A Ferrari or yeah, whatever that Ferrari. was. Well, you had um, also had the helicopter from Magnum PI. Yeah. You also had the helicopter from Riptide, and Airwolf. Airwolf. Yeah, yeah they, I mean, they made, they, a big, really they made, made a big deal about that. Yeah. Uh, the um, Daisy Duke's Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> Cooter's tow truck. <laughs> <laughs> tow. Cooter tow. Cooter. <laughs> Is it ironic that you had Daisy Dukes and Cooter at the same show? <laughs> no. I don't get it. Oh, neither do I. Okay. That's just saying. Uncle Jesse. <laughs> Uncle Jesse shit wagon. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> Roscoe P. Cole train. Coo, coo, coo. What was the name of the dog on that show? Dog on that. You give me a second, and I will And I will definitely come you, up with this. I'm going to give you five seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, oh, three, um, 1, No, you can't count four. out loud. Okay, I'll start again. Oh, fuck. No, talk about something different and do not give me in any way, shape, or form the answer and I will come up with this. All right. Well, we could do a whole different show about TV shows and the animals that are on the show and what was the name of... That's another thing. I could t- like, it was a basset hound. I remember the it, dog. It was. Oh, fuck tards. All right, what was it? I give up. Flash. Flash. Damn it. Damn it. I met Boss Hog. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Where? At the Autorama. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I And actually, the flashbulb moment, I met Boss Hog, and that was the year that I got my black t-shirt with the Fall Guy logo, Iron On logo. A pretty solid Autorama right there. Yeah, that is pretty good. Yeah, I, I, and I don't know. Probably saw the General Lee. I don't fucking remember it. I remember seeing a huge monster truck where the tire was like eight times the size of my head. Or eight times the size of my body. Did you know you can drive those things on water and they float? Monster trucks? Yep. No, they don't. Yep. Absolutely. Little known fact. That's a very little known fact. I, I never you in my life... Take a monster... Any of those monster trucks, you can drive them right out in the water. They float. Because the tires are full of air. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> you know what else floats? Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Dead bodies. <laughs> No, they don't. They sink to the bottom. No, they most certainly Did do you not. ever not watch that show, Dexter? Uh, no. Oh. Well, they have oxygen. They have they have oxygen in them. They have to float. No, they don't. All the oxygen is gone. There's still got to be something in the book. Do they? No. It's... Do you know, according to Monty Python and the Holy Grail, <laughs> <laughs> the witches float? <laughs> No, I don't know that. Do you know that those guys were actually historians? And we go back to movies. Those guys were actual See, historians. No, I did not know that. Yeah, that most of the stuff in that movie, I'm not going to say all of it because I can't really speak on all of it, but most of that stuff in that movie was actually accurate. Like when they were throwing livestock and stuff over the edge, they were like, ah, look, they threw a cow. Okay, well, they might not have done that, but any garbage, any shit they had, they threw over the edges of castles to gross people out and to hit them and just get rid of everything they could get rid of. There you go. And the whole thing, that whole thing was based on the stupidity of, of like the witch trials and things like that that they did. All right, well, whatever. 
So anyway, I think I'm almost out of TV shows. And I, I, I know I'm I know I'm gonna like leave here and I'm gonna be like, wait, what am I missing here? I'm gonna I'm gonna come up with something like how do we not talk about greatest American hero? Yeah, well that was that's well and we we over we overlooked that one, which was I remember that one like Lawrence Welk. Did you ever remember? No, I didn't that? watch Lawrence Welk. That was Sunday night. Lawrence Welk, take a bath, and when the Lawrence Welk show was over, then it was I had to go to bed. No, Chips. I never did Chips that. was Sunday night too. Maybe it was Lawrence Welk then Chips, and then I. Why had to go would to you bed. do that to a child? Lawrence Welk then Chips because we had three channels and that's all we could watch, <laughs> <laughs> and we liked it. We walked up to, we walked to school uphill both ways and we liked it. Pretty mu- well, it wasn't the fact that we liked it; it was we had no choices back then. It was like when you have like literally like three channels you watch what the fuck is on so and anytime they played a movie they play it over and over and over again so you i mean shit but let's see what else what other i'm trying to even think like i mean i i honestly one of my favorite shows and we go back to something i already talked about was quantum leap i loved that you show i like the history that but i like the history behind it like he'd go back to something and then all of a sudden he'd be like in like 1960 that's why i like that 11 22 63 i'm telling you it is a phenomenal show jennifer conley oh all right let's go back to that topic what will smith's kid <laughs> women of the 80s that oh yeah or women of tv shows that were like drooling over yeah well i mean he, or in movies Jeez. And music videos. Well, here's here. Well, come that kind of that kind of goes in with the whole the whole uh, um, TV thing. I mean, MTV and oh, I don't know. It kind of goes in there, doesn't it? I guess. Downtown Julie Brown. No. Oh. Kennedy. No, but tell me, and, and I don't even know. I couldn't tell you what this woman looked like to save my life. I couldn't pick her out of a lineup if the, I needed to. The show was called Voyagers. Oh, okay. I do vaguely remember that. There's a picture. I oh my god! I re- oh I told the little shithead. Why did you say there was a little shithead with a fro? I don't remember that. I just remember the guy with the leather jacket. Oh my god! Is that on Netflix? No, but this is the show. That with, was a great show. Yeah, and he had the little he yes. had the pocket, and he popped a little pocket. Yes. It was like a pocket yes. watch. But you, oh my god! But see now that gives me a shitty memory. First episode, October third, nineteen eighty-two. That gives me a shitty memory now, because Where, yeah. that that concept of that show reminds me of the movie. Again, we go back to movies. Reminds me of the movie Time Bandits, which makes me fucking yes. creeped out. Time Bandits. That was a great movie. It no, was- it had the same token seven midget dudes that are in Kenny every Baker. video. Was Kenny Baker? I know War- uh, Warwick Davis was in that. Yeah. Yes. But the, it, but it was it was like Kenny Baker, Warwick Davis, and all the people that were in the the safety dance video. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I but, think it was but at I the mean, same time. No, but if you look at that, it was like the same small people that were in that were in like everything. But that was, I mean, we talk about like these genre that were these cars and there was this theme or whatever like that was a big thing like those the, those same group of people and you know what i wonder if it was because of warwick davis and, and kenny baker because of how big they had become that it actually became a thing like they were i wonder if they were desirable actors this is just me brainstorming i wonder well, if they become relatively desirable actors at that point so the synopsis of the voyagers or Voyagers, is a member of a league of time travelers and a boy travel through time repairing errors in world history. So this would have been right up... I think I need to go watch that show. Yeah, I wonder if it's on Hulu or something it like that. Says I it's I can on, find it. It says it's on Amazon. See, I've got Amazon. I have Amazon Prime. Well, it might not be a Prime, though. But if, it's on, if it's on Amazon? <sighs> but then they have some other shows that we should check out. Like? Do you, how about this show, Eight is Enough? Do you remember that one? I hated that show. I, that little, that little uh, that Nicholas. Little, yeah, he was such a douche. This is his hair. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I think he was obnoxious. Oh, oh, look, Punky Brewster, Punky Brewster. <laughs> she got big knockers. Uh, different strokes. We talked about that one. Um, 
Johnny Quest. I hated that show. I didn't like it either. A Perfect Strange. Oh, here we go. Here's another good one. Benson. Remember that one? You know what? I got a better one because Robert where did, Guillaume. Where did Benson come from? Uh, that was I do know that. Soap. Yep. <laughs> that was a great fucking show. I, I never. I could. I liked Benson. I could not do soap. Really? Though. Yeah. God, what were the two families? The Tates and that is that was a real that was a that was a great. I'm really show. Really surprised I got that. That was a great show because if oh, you Mr. Really, Belvedere. If you really. It was kind of groundbreaking. I mean, it was a, it was a, a spoof on on soap operas. But I mean, you had great actors. Billy Crystal was in there. Billy Crystal was in was in soap. God, that's another one I should just go back and just binge watch. God, what were the two? Look that up. What were the two families in? Here, I'll look it up. I don't what know. Were the two families I'm, in I'm looking up trivia about Mr. Belvedere right now. I don't Why? Know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just it happened. It's like one of those things that just kind of. Silver Spoons, Charles in Charge of my days. Webster, and my who's the boss? I we want about that one. Charles in Charge oh, of me. Okay, here's another show that was totally forgotten. How about My Two Dads? I'm kind of gay. I know. I didn't like that one. Oh, I got one for the you. The guy had the beard, though. Um. Oh, there's no. One. I don't have one for you. Um. Who's it? Do you remember the show Valerie? The Campbells and the Tates. There we go. These are the Campbells. <laughs> These are the Tates. <laughs> and this is Soap. Wayne? Garth? <laughs> Wayne Campbell? No. Oh. The show Valerie. No, I don't know that. It was originally the saga of a working mom raising her three sons alone while her pilot husband was away. After star Valerie Harper left the series, her role was filled by Sandy Duncan, no relation to Peter. (laughs) (laughs) Are you sure? She could have been. She had a glass eye, though, I heard. (laughs) Peter Duncan only has one eye, too. I know. (laughs) These are the Campbells. These are the Tates. And this is... Soap. Jeez, let, let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at all these these TV. Oh, Empty Nest. That was another one. What was the one with Ted Knight? Where he Ted, had the puppet? Ted Knight. Oh, Ted Knight. Ted, Ted Knight Ted from Knight. Caddyshack? And they lived in a house, and the one dude rented the apartment upstairs. Yeah. And, uh, and he was a cartoonist, and he had a, a cow puppet. Oh, Ted Knight. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yes, I do remember that show. Um, That was funny, too. And that was big for a while. Yeah, I, I'm not exactly sure. I remember watching that show. I can't remember the guy that uh, was the dude that lived upstairs. I, I remember his name. Um, but he was, was a, like a Jim J. Bullock. Yes, that's yes, that's who it was. Straight out of the butthole on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Jim uh, J. Bullock. He used to be on uh, Tic Tac Toe, or not Tic Tac Toe, uh, uh, what was that? Hollywood Squares. Yes. He was the center square all the time. That Yeah, that was another, I mean, there were, then that's what's going uh, too close for comfort. Yes, that's what it was. Yeah. That was a great show. That Yeah, well, that Ted Knight's just funny. He was awesome. And um, here's a weird story about Ted Knight. I remember uh, like when he died. I remembered thinking, oh man, that's huge. Ted Knight. Like, I remembered thinking that was a big deal. Oh, I just got reminded of another great show that I could not believe that we forgot. Remember uh, Bosom Buddies? Oh, yeah. That was a great show. Tom Hanks and Peter Scolari. Yeah. I have the worst taste in shit like that. When I, when I used to watch Bosom Buddies, the one that I liked was Peter Scolari. I you know I'm like oh Tom Hanks he's alright and he becomes this huge actor Laverne and Shirley I didn't like Laverne I liked Shirley huh because I didn't liked, like Lenny I liked Squiggy because you liked Pat Benatar maybe that's what I always I always put those two together you put you put Not Shirley s- and Pat Nebatar together <laughs> yeah Yeesh. they both had the same they both had the same hairdo I like short dark haired women. I guess you do. That's crazy. Huh. 
How about okay? Let's see. I got a I got a nice look. Well, let's see. Well, Ted Knight had his own show, the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Well, of course. Keep it in the family. Give me a break. There, there was another. The Jeffersons, of course. Should, should facts of life? Should I bust this out on you now or later? What? Well, it has to stay off mic. Uh, wait. Okay. Trapper John. But it fits. Well, how? How? All are right. We never mind. We'll wait till later. Newhart. Oh, Newhart. I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl. This is my other brother Daryl. <laughs> Yeah, I've I've really grown a great appreciation for Bob Newhart the older I've gotten. I I could never get in. I I have a hard time still getting. I have a hard time still getting into his comedy. He, I tell you what, where he really got me was on uh, Big Bang Theory. Oh, dude, I never saw that. Dude, he is great. He was on Big Bang Theory. Yeah, he's he's a kind of reoccurring is character. He's still alive. I believe so. Yeah. Really. Yeah, he plays like a like a a, a TV science guy like a. a what like is, Bill Nye? Yeah, Bill Nye. He's like plays like a guy like that who's retired and Sheldon like worships him. him. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, he yeah, he's pretty funny. That's crazy. No, I, I remember, oh my God. This is gonna be the longest episode. We're at two hours right now. And we could probably go for another hour. I know we could, but we the thing is, it. is like where I already have like about thirty minutes to cut off the beginning of this. So Yeah. So let's let's just wrap this up because I don't want to. All right, we're, we'll we're, finish this. We're, we're let's kind do of, this. Let's do movies or something like that. Yeah, we'll do. This is men on TV. We'll do men on film. <laughs> it's rain and men living color. Did, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, and then you're getting mad TV. No, you're not because living color. That, Jim Carrey, Jamie Fox, Keenan Ivory Wayans, yeah, Damon but, Wayans. But we're hitting at the same time as the Cosby Show, a Different World. When this whole like weird the the, the when african americans came yeah. out came out to be popular and like really we started to accept them and embrace the culture which is well, huge yeah, but that was the huge, same time when that malcolm x movie came out by by a, yeah. was that spike lee well no but it was uh denzel washington yeah was, denzel washington was, was that a spike lee movie I was be- that a spike lee joint i believe i'm not exactly 100 percent sure do you remember uh, you've seen eddie murphy raw right a uh, long time ago. Watch the opening scene to Eddie Murphy Raw. And he, Eddie Murphy was huge with the Wayans, apparently, because in the opening scene, Keenan Ivory Wayans is, uh, I believe, young Eddie's, might be young Eddie's dad, or he was just like uncle or something like that. But yeah, we can wrap it up. It's fine. All right. So, everyone, thank you for checking this out. Sorry if we, but. The, the, this was not really what we intended no, when we got here. Okay. Not that anyone's listening at this point. Yeah, but that's true. Everyone's zoned us out by now. We're, we're, Josh and I have already recorded an episode two times over that got fucked up. So we we all intent tonight was to go over that. And somehow we got on this and talked for two hours. But uh, thanks for sticking around for this long. We will be cutting that other episode at some point. <laughs> I, I don't have the it. energy. I really don't have the energy for that right now. No, I mean, shit, we can do it. I, maybe that episode would be better later down the road once we're kind of past. Well, I mean, keep in mind, they you haven't posted that episode, so we should probably at least in, in a couple minutes briefly say that we, we came here intending on talking about grief, loss, and depression, and I don't know about you, but this I, needed way this, better. I needed this a lot more. I came into here tonight... Thinking, you know, I don't know. We tried to we tried to do this twice. There's one that if you were to if you're interested, I'm sure you can yeah you can, you can message you can, Scott and yeah, get it. Email me Scott at thebeardcaster.com. So then we, we I'll, tried. To, I'll send it to you. And then we tried to reshoot it, and we lost it about a halfway halfway in. And it's on grief, loss, and depression, and people that we were very very close to. And I just I came tonight, and I'm like, I don't know if I have the energy to do this. And next thing you know, Scott and I are being Scott and I, and at the very least, you know, this is this is great just to have for the two of us yeah, for definitely. at some point in time for prosperity. Just well, sit here and this is but I think this is I, how we are though. This is this is a night for us. Yeah, but I think I think a lot of people will enjoy listening to this because I think that our age demographic fits a lot of the people that do listen to my podcast. How are you gonna market this? Mr. Belvedere did not have a beard. He did too, he had a mustache. Oh, there you go. Streak stolen yeah. the giant. <laughs> yeah. 
No, we already we already tied it in with the Abraham Lincoln thing. So, oh, we did. Yeah, <clears throat> title it Abraham Lincoln and eighties nineties pop culture. Yeah, but the thing is, is like this is something that I mean, we we grew up at this time period, and a lot of people that listen to this show are around the same age, so they're going to totally know every thing we're talking about. You know, and in fairness, most of the episodes that I've been on are the best ones. Do, well, they've had nothing to do with beards. Oh, well, yeah, you're right. But the thing is, is like, I don't want, this show doesn't have to always be about that. I mean, the more the show is like evolving, it's turning more into the, the social things that, or the, the things that were, I mean, granted or not, if we have a beard or not, we all go through certain situations that anyone with a beard or doesn't have one, they, that goes through. I mean, it's. You know, like with the whole idea of doing the grieving episode was kind of trying to reach out to people who are dealing with depression or not knowing how to cope with something. Um, That was the whole point of that. But we failed to really provide a proper episode for that yet. And as we just kind of riffed tonight and kind of came up with where we, we ended up, it's just more of like, hey, man, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a beard or not. This is just shit that people sit around and talk about. And, and it's well, relatable, I think the coolest though. thing for me was I came here tonight, and I told you when I came in here, I'm because basically what happened, I don't know, I don't think you're going to put this on here. I will. This, portion, this is going to stay. This is going to stay. No, 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 I'm I talking mean, about the earlier stuff. Oh, yeah, the earlier stuff. I mean, the first, like, 20, 30 minutes. But what, it, but what did we off. say? We said, let's get a beer down and just kind of hang out. And you actually do this all the time to me and I don't know if I'm happy or sad about it but you do this all the time where you just press record and I don't even know you're I don't even know you're recording mm-hmm. but uh, we had agreed you know let's just just let's just chill out let's have a beer let's get in the mood and I told you when I came in here I'm like man I don't know if I have the energy for this but let's see how it goes and uh, the Dave, coolest part about this the coolest part about this episode is that when we came in here I didn't know if I had the energy to even talk tonight and now here we are like two hours into this thing and honestly I don't really want to stop I can keep going no so do I but I just I'm the no listener. nobody's gonna want to listen for yeah. four fucking hours to this stuff but I but that's the, I mean you I mean know, the episode title could be blowing off steam with 80s and 90s nostalgia there you go. Because I came Something in here like, like, I don't know if I can talk about this, but I'll find a way, you know, like, we'll, we'll I'll suck it up and we'll, we'll do what we got to do. And we turned like this, hey, you know, let's talk about this a little bit. And I don't know about you, but this was highly therapeutic for me to no, not I, talk about it, to just come in here and just Well, I mean, be that, us. but that's been us for the past two weeks is that's all we've been talking about. It's been our focus and, you know, is the boys getting killed in a car accident. It's all you know dealing with it's been our, tough it's been tough you know dealing with our personal lives and, but especially with your niece's graduation party yeah. tomorrow that's not going to be easy and no, it's th- not. i didn't need to, to rehash this tonight i did think about that on the way here but i did want to be true to what you wanted to do and i didn't really want to rehash it but then i come here and i'm like you know I, this is this this gives me a lot of energy because this was this was fun yeah i, I mean this. yeah it, like i said it's just been heavy for us for the past two three weeks and it's and and we've been trying to talk about it for the past two or three weeks, and we've been talking about it for the past two or three weeks. So, and this is the most normal it's been in the last two yeah, or three weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Like, how which do is we, the cool part about this episode? Absolutely, that's exactly it. So, I mean, if someone pulls something out of it, it's hey, you know what? You might be going through a shitty patch in your life, but sometimes a great friend, and you can have a fantastic conversation about stupid shit like. Hey, remember that TV show we watched when we were like eight years old? <laughs> I mean, that's what this whole entire thing turned into. It was reminiscing about being young. It was about remembering the things that made you happy when you were a kid, TV and all that stuff. And that it's, ultimately it's is coping. what it is. It is. It, that's all this is. It's a, maybe that's what you call this coping with grief. This has nothing to do with the actual grief itself, but this is yeah. how we cope. You know, I mean, you, you yeah. have a few laughs, you have a few beers, and you sit down and you just... I mean, we've had more than a few laughs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and someone else might listen to this and be like, wow, this is the dumbest shit. Okay, you know what? Sorry, This, this episode's off. not for you. You know, stop listening. Some people might be listening to this absolute to the bitter end to get to the 
the, the they're like, where the hell's the beard shit come in? Yeah, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, go back ten minutes. Yeah, no, twenty uh, tw- an hour, <laughs> an hour. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, hey, th- there's a bearded guy out there that had lost someone in the past couple weeks. I don't. Who, I wouldn't even try. I would not even try to relate this to grief and and loss and depression. I'm, I would just say this was an episode of us just blowing off some okay. steam and having so this a conversation one, this was we for us. to have. This, this was, was for us. us. Okay. That yeah. That hashtag, is it. Hashtag for us. Hashtag for us. Hashtag And there'll be more in the future because we haven't even gotten to movies or video killing the radio star. Hashtag for us. I'm gonna have to remember that hashtag. Hashtag for us. Yeah. I could write it down if you want. Uh, I'm, okay, right. Write, right. write it on that sheet. All right. Of the notes that we can't lose that sh- this sheet we cannot lose. Well, yeah, that actually was good until we lost it. Until you lost the video of it. Yeah. But all right, Scott, this okay. was therapeutic. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Josh. I love you and love you, bud. Oh, okay, peace out. Peace. But and cut. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for if you stuck through it all the way to the very end. Um, like I said, this was a very, very therapeutic episode for josh and i and it was fun to reminisce about being younger and and you know just pulling back a lot of memories and yeah i I guess that's all i can really say about it so but like i said if by some chance you are really dying to hear these episode 34 i may release them someday down the road i don't know I, i just i really don't know how i feel about them yet but if you really, really want to hear, um, just email me, scott at thebeardcaster.com. And uh, like I said, I'll consider I'll consider sharing it. Uh, but until then, I guess, just check out thebeardcaster.com. Once again, check out social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And I guess that's about it. So thanks a lot, everyone. And I guess I'll talk to you guys uh, maybe next week. So until then, ciao.